Foothills of North Carolina. It's the confirmed Epic Podcast, the official podcast of the EpicReview.com. I'm your captain, Jerry Reed, also known as Barbecue Seventeen. Joining me today is Lieutenant Gina Wiltshire, also known as Gina Beater. Hey, this is Science Officer Kristen, also known as Arathalia. And today is our episode where we're going to be talking about the new film, Star Trek Into Darkness. We're going to be talking about some other nerd news that's happened in the past couple weeks. And we're also going to be talking about what we're doing. Brad Bell, our resident red shirt, is not with us this week. (laughs) But he'll be back after dealing with a case of the Tribbles. So, <laughs> let's start off with, Gina, what have you been checking out this week? Um, well, I know I'm a little behind the time, um, but I found my PC, my old PC from college, um, a few weeks ago, and so I've been, like, reloading all my old PC games, and I mm-hmm. thought, you know what, I would really like to try out the sort of new <laughs> Star Wars The Old Republic. Um <clears throat> And I know that it came out in, like, December of 2011, yeah. so it's been around for a few years, at least, um, and I had to sit through, like, a four-hour-long patch. <laughs> it was oh, my gosh. Awful. It was, oh my gosh. It was every awful. patch that's yes. yeah. since every then. single okay. patch that's come I had to download the really? game and every single patch that's come out. So, anyway, um, but I've been playing it for probably about maybe 15 hours, um, maybe a little bit less, Um but I have really enjoyed it. The The opening scenes, the way that the um, the game begins is you have just these <coughs> visually stunning, almost, well, they are, they're completely cinematic um, scenes that you're watching about kind of setting up the storyline of what's happening in the, the galaxy right now. And so this game actually takes place over 3,000 years before the Battle for Yavin. Okay. Um, so before episode four. Um, and we have this battle going on between the Galactic Republic and the Sith Empire. Okay. And so you hear a lot about the Republic and the Empire. And don't be confused, this isn't the Rebels and right. the okay. Empire right. This is the of, old This is the Republic. old Republic yeah. Um, yeah. and the, the Sith Empire. Um, which some might would claim that, you know, Darth Vader's reign was kind of a sort of Sith empire, but that didn't necessarily look so much as the Sith were governing it and Mm -hmm. the empire was just kind of like its, its go-to sort of people, but it looked more like the empire was controlling it and Darth Vader was almost kind of like a pawn. Now you did have the emperor who was a Sith Lord. Yeah, who was kind of controlling everything. He was controlling everything, but it, it, it doesn't look the same as this. This you very much so have tons of Sith Lords with apprentices and... Um, they are kind of controlling the troops, very much so. Um, so you can choose to play either um, the light side or the dark side, um, and that's not necessarily the force. The light side is the Republic, and the dark side is the Empire, and so on the light side, you have your trooper, which um, looks kind of like a clone, but not really. It's like it's bigger and bulkier okay. than a clone, Um and then you have the Smuggler and the Jedi Knight and the Jedi Consular. The difference between the Jedi Knight and the Jedi Consular is the Knight is the, like, hack and slash character. You just go mm-hmm. through and, you know, you have got you can wear heavy armor and you've got um, a single-bladed lightsaber. Whereas the Jedi Consular is more of, like, the ambassador. Um, they can use a dual-blade dual lightsaber, which, if you play the Kotar games... Um, so what Bastila Sean uses. Uh huh. Like, um, most she was a of the time, consular, right? Um, pro. I I don't know. It's been such a long time since I played that game. Um, but that sounds that sounds right to me. But typically, you'd see the Sith wielding the dual blade lightsaber, and the the Jedi's would typically use two single blade 
um, is typically how that would happen. Um, so they've got some kind of melding over here, which is fine, because I love the double-bladed. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's freaking awesome. Um, and then on the dark side, you have the bounty hunter, um, the imperial agent, which is kind of like a spy, um, the Sith warrior, which is akin to the Jedi Knight on the dark side, and then the Sith Inquisitor, which is akin to the Jedi Consular on the dark side. So I am playing as a Jedi Consular, um, and I'm still just a Padawan. <laughs> um, and it is an MMORPG, so there's so lots of people. Are you fighting other players a lot of the time? It depends on which server you're on. Okay. They have um, PVE, which is player versus environment servers, mm -hmm. and they have PVP, P. which is player versus player servers. So you just choose what you want to do. If you're in a PVE server, you can battle other people, but it has to be consensual. Whereas PvP, you know, it's all, you know. Somebody can just run up and yeah, kill you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, um, it, it just <coughs> depends on what you pick. I'm playing PvE, especially since I just created this character, and I don't want to be mowed over <laughs> every <Okay>. few feet. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but it is extremely immersive. Um, there are lots of quests to do. You know, it's, it's pretty much your basic <laughs> MMORPG. Um, you're just running around this big open world. <coughs> there are elements in in the atmosphere that you have to battle, and they do respawn, and, you know, just your typical kind of what, like... <clears throat> go what, ahead. What alien races do we see that we would recognize? Anything really cool from Star Wars? Um, right now, the only race that I have, that I can name that I have recognized are <laughs> Twi'leks. Okay. Um, and I'm in the opening world, so I haven't explored much. There's a lot on that world that, um, that are new. They're called, um, flesh eaters, um, and they're kind of like cannibals. Okay. They, Interesting. They're like a mixture between a hammerhead shark and, gosh, I don't, I can't really describe them. But they're big and they're bulky and... Are they brown? No, they're kind of like salmon okay color <laughs> um but yeah and there's there's lots of like beasts and animals you know like cat like beasts and herd you know cows and those kind of things okay. um so but it, it's it's a lot like um you know any other mmo you've ever played like world of warcraft or anything like that um but it's 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 been really fun and it's free to play up to level fifty, um, although there are some limitations. So if you want to be able to encounter everything and to level up past fifty and that kind of stuff, then you'll have to subscribe. But for me, for right now, you know, investing what I can, I'm I'm playing the free version. So at this point, would you can is it something you consider subscribing to? I mean, just you know, not not considering. Anything just, are, are you enjoying it enough that you feel like it would be something you would put more time in and actually put money in? If I had the income, yes, definitely. Okay. But it's not something that I would, um, I'm not so blown away by it that I would just, you know, if, if I had the money, then sure. yes, I would. When you start, <clears throat> and maybe this might be a limitation of, you said, you know, doing the free version. Yeah. Can you can you pick a race? Yes, you can. Can you be a Mon Calamari? No, oh. you can't. Um, I want to be a Mon Calamari <laughs> and just go onto the PvP servers, and anytime someone it's a trap! kill me, yeah, I'm like, that's a trap! And that's all I'm going to do until I get to level 50. you trolling. And then I wouldn't pay anymore. <laughs> So. Do it for a month and then you'd be yeah, done. That, that would be probably enough for me. <laughs> that, that would be really funny. Um, yeah, you can. So when you first enter it, you create your own name. And I tried to do the randomizer, and every time I found something I liked, it was already taken. So the randomizer isn't working very well. That's weird. Um, have you ever done this? The this create your own Star Wars name. I think I have. <coughs> I, I did a create your own. Um, D and D character. The, the Star Wars was really big a few years ago, and you take the first three letters of your last name, and the first two of your first name, and and that's that's your first name. So like mine is Reege. Reege. And I and which I use for like any 
shooter D and D. You know, I'm always that's a pretty staring. decent name. Reach, yeah. yeah. Reach. And then you do your last name is the first two letters of your mother's maiden name, and the first three of the city you were born in. So I'm Reach Lefley. That's a real Star Wars sounding yeah, name. Yeah, it is. I had a friend growing up. He was Starry Bomad. Starry, Starry Bomad. That sounds like a Gungan almost. I, you know, music called a Starry Bomad. I mean, <laughs> that's that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So. Okay. So it's the first three Gina's letters. Gina's work working it yeah, out. Yeah. First three letters of your last name. <laughs> first two letters of your first name, and then what was the last name? Uh, first, first, um, first two letters of your mother's maiden name. Oh. Okay. And first three of the city you were born in. Okay, so I'm Wilge Tonu. That sounds like a Star Wars name. It doesn't, it doesn't sound very feminine, though. No, that's okay. Well, mine, to, well, my, gr my grandmother's name was Wilda, so you could be, Wil you know, like, that's a Wil there's a, there's a, there's a precedent there. Wilge, Wilja, Wilge, Wilge Tonu? Tonu. Wilge Tonu, okay. I like the last one. Have time. we worked yours out before, Kristen? Um, yeah, mine is Reeker. Rylan. Rylan. It Rylan. sounds like a Star yeah. Wars name. <laughs> is this what Lucas used? I don't know, because a lot of the names in the new movies were like right on the nose. I heard, okay, like, so. Uh, like uh, Sleaze Begon, Sleaze Bagano or Sleaze Bagano, the, oh, yeah. uh, the guy who sells the, tries to sell Obi Wan death yeah. sticks. You know? <laughs> someone were like. I always thought that was yeah, kind of cheesy. Yeah, someone were a little um, bit there. But I heard, I think my brother told me this a long time ago, that George Lucas's children actually came up with the name for Han Solo. I don't even think George Lucas had kids when the movies came out. Maybe, did His Steven kid... Spielberg have kids? No, no Steven Spiel George. Spielberg didn't have kids until after uh Indiana Jones Temple of Doom, because that was the movie we said. Maybe it was like niece, nieces and nephews. I don't know. I don't know, but that's that's what I remember hearing is that like he said, okay, pick a consonant, and so they picked H, and then pick a vowel, A, pick okay. a consonant, N. <laughs> that's so. also how he wrote episode two. Yes, exactly. <laughs> two and three. Yeah. All right, pick an emotion, anger. Pick a random Star Wars character, Tuscan Raider. This is good. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, George Lucas, what happened? <laughs> uh, pick, pick a verb. Hold. Uh, pick a place. Uh, pick a body of water. Lake. <laughs> pick a planet. Nabu. Yes. <laughs> Hold me by the lake on Nabu. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened. So. Gosh. Yeah, uh, so I, that's that's what I've been doing. It's it's after that 15-hour wait for, for oh the gosh. patches. No, it was, it was probably at least four hours, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. But it's been it's been fun. It's been enjoyable. Okay, you played a little bit of uh, in Injustice: Gods Among Us because I know I lent yeah. it to you. What did you think about it? Um, I thought it was pretty good. <coughs> I I didn't have the patience to like sit and study the charts for their moves, and I felt like I did when I knew the moves and I was trying to do them. I felt like I did better being really random okay. and just like pushing buttons. So that was a little frustrating. <coughs> Um, and I'm sure that would, that would go away with time as yeah. I played more and like really, sp but you know, I don't, I don't know how <coughs> I feel about fighting games. I don't mind the gameplay, but it's kind of like, I'd rather just watch a movie. I'd rather watch this as a movie hmm. than play short fight scenes in between. Yeah. You know? I, um, I really liked it. I, I, I'm not a huge fighting game fan. I mean, I really, you know, I really played a lot of Street Fighter 2 back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, that was on G-Force Top 100 Games of All Time. Oh, Street Fighter 2 is a fantastic... I mean, I played every version of Street Fighter 2 that was available on Super Nintendo. That was like a two-hour long show and I watched it. Yeah, Street Fighter it. World Warrior, <laughs> Street Fighter Championship Edition, Street Fighter, the one that had the bricks breaking on the cover, that mm -hmm. you know had all the uh, Cammy and T-Hawk in it. Um, played Soul Calibur. I actually like the Soul Calibur series because it's a little bit more based on actually blocking like you're using yeah. weapons and stuff and shields so there's a blocking element to it but um injustice injustice snared me in enough to go out and get it uh one because brad picked it up yeah um kind of well, it's really fun it's one of those few multiplayer games where you can actually sit, sit next down to each in other. the same room uh -huh. but yeah. i was hoping that brad would you know would be online we'd play online some but that hasn't happened yet but I'm liking it. Um, it was a pretty good story. I mean, obviously, 
you know, you have to get away in a fighting game like that to explain why are all these characters fighting each other. Yeah. So using the infinite, you know, using two universes, I mean, that's not unheard of in DC. That's yeah. a pretty common part of DC mythology. So I, saw, I thought that worked well. One of my favorite parts of that was when um, you're playing as Joker. It's towards the very beginning. Um, well, not the very beginning, but, you know, you're playing as Joker, and he's landed into this other he, Gotham. Yeah. And he runs into, um, her name just left Harley me. Quinn. Harley. He runs, yeah. into, he runs into Harley, and she's, like, super pissed off at him because yeah. he's been dead for several years, and, like, they start beating up on each other, and she's like, oh my gosh, it's totally you, because of the way he beats up. Yep. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because I used to work for a domestic violence um, agency, prevention agency, and yet their romance is one of my favorite. It's a really odd <laughs> kind of thing there. Yeah. So I like the game. Um, one of the things that, that does irritate me a little bit is that some of the stuff seems to be unlocked through an app that you have to have an, um, what is it, iOS system mm -hmm. to play this app. Which, I mean, you know, we only have a, a Android-based system. Yeah. So there's large parts of the game that... You can't... That really aren't accessible. Yeah. A lot of costumes and some of the stuff. And I know we're going to talk about the Xbox One later, but that seems like the future of gaming. And I'm yeah, a little concerned yeah. about that. Yeah, I am too. I that think we'll have a long screen. conversation on that. Um, other than the other than that, I mean, I'm, I'm still working my way. I'm, I'm trying this summer to get through... As much Jack Kirby stuff as I can, new guy. Uh, you know, I just bought that big Avengers on the vest. I haven't even started it yet, <laughs> but I, but I did pick it up. Um, I've got all the new Masters of the Universe figures for the month, including the Spirit of Horda, uh, Spirit of Hordak. Oh, I, you did get. Where is it? Uh, yeah. You have right, them out. He's right down there for the oh, moment. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. He's you know, the translucent red that was Mattel's. We're gonna <laughs> randomly put this figure up and. Uh, I know I ranted enough about it on the website, but I'll rant about it a little more. Do you it, like it though? Oh, I, I mean, I like the figure. I mean, it's a it's a neat concept. What 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 I what I was ranting about was the whole sales. I don't know if I want to say gimmick, but the whole sales model for the Masters of the Universe Classics line has been buy everything. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, that's not you know that's. That's a lot of toy lines. Collect them all. I mean, yeah. every toy line as a kid said, "Collect them all." Yeah. But Masters started, and people <clears throat> were saying, "Okay, you know, what about people that that want to buy everything?" Their sale times for, I mean, for the U.S. are like right in the middle of the day. Which, I mean, you're at work. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Uh -huh. When I didn't have a subscription, I was having to buy them off eBay because I was at work. Yeah. Uh, and they were selling out so fast, so they started this subscription model. You yes. know, you. Basically, you know, and you enjoy the subscription. Model. I love the yeah, idea. I yes. love the idea of here. I'll pay the money, and you send me any character yeah, you I want. Yeah, I like that idea because too. Because I don't care. I like like every area of Masters of the Universe for the most part. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I really do. And they're superb. They figures. are. They're, so they're they nice really looking, yeah. are pristine. So they did the first year of the subscriptions, and then they started, but they started releasing characters that weren't in the <laughs> subscription. People were mm. like, "Whoa, hold on, we ordered a subscription." Trying to get reason. everything. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, well, we didn't want to put some of this stuff in the subscription. subscription. So the next year, it was, okay, all the, you know, extra characters and creatures were in the subscription. They continued to do this. They would put, like, accessory kits and little stuff outside the subscription. So finally, this year, they said, okay, if you subscribe, you get access a day early to things. Okay. You know, before they go on sale... <laughs> You have access a day early. There's like a 24-hour period. Are these period. only available online? They are only available online one day a month. And that's why they sell month. out, sell yeah. out mm -hmm. so quickly. Yeah. I mean, some of the sale outs were crazy. And so I'm guessing that people would like go and buy as much as they could and then resell them. There were some definitely limits, happens. but yeah, that definitely was happening. And I think that for a while helped the line because people were buying large amounts of them. But then mm -hmm. after a while, it sort of, I, I personally feel it sort of crashed when people realized, well, I... Everybody was like, oh, we'll get a subscription and have all these figures to sell. Uh -huh. And everybody had the like, same idea. This is Mattel, right? Yeah. Do you feel like Mattel uh, was kind of feeling like their clientele base was being choked off? Because, I mean, I. Oh, we're may being not... choked off, all right. <laughs> no, no I'm but just Mattel was being choked off because I may not want to pay a subscription fee, 
but if you have a random figure here or there that I really like, I'll go out and buy it. And they weren't <laughs> having that anymore. And so they're saying, well, our sales are actually decreasing because there are more people who would like to buy one thing at a time as opposed to a subscription. They are really, really pushing this subscription model. I mean, they they have, they have mm -hmm. basically, it seems like, almost just come out and said next year when yeah. we start subscribing there probably won't be day of sale stuff. I mean, you if you don't subscribe, you're just not going to get it. And this yet year they're shooting their subscribers in the foot right now. <laughs> well, like they're, they're, they're what they do off. is so all this stuff and, and 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 the issue is, you know, the figures are a little expensive, but I'm okay with that. I'm accustomed to figures being a little more expensive when the kind of stuff I collect. And they're worth it. But shipping. Shipping mm -hmm. is the one thing that yeah. that Mattel can have control over and say, "Okay, let's try ship everything together." When you do a random figure at a random time and nobody can know when it's going to hit, I can't choose to ship that with other figures. Yeah, and so yeah. there's, and Mattel shipping is really expensive compared to other places like Amazon, uh, eBay, Hasbro Toy Shop, Toys R Us dot com. Doesn't matter. Their mm -hmm. their shipping is ridiculously high and it's really, really slow. So it's just kind of weird. But I got the figure. I mean, it's a cool idea. I understand it was kind of fun to have a figure that nobody knew about this. And I mean, in toy collecting these days, that is unheard of to have a figure released that nobody knows of. I mean, we see prototypes and stuff yeah. years in advance. And I understand the fun that people think these kind of things are, are fun and sort of throw us back to being kids and just seeing something on the shelf that we'd never seen before. But... At the very least, it was, once again, I couldn't control purchasing that yeah. with other items. So they're getting you on shipping, and it just was kind of one of those weird sort of things. I bought it off eBay because I didn't want to mess with the hassle. Yeah, yeah. That I, I don't have all day. You know, I work. Um, I sleep. You know, <laughs> I, I don't sit online. You sleep? Yeah, uh, somewhat, a little bit. Sometimes I don't, I don't, hours a night. I don't <laughs> stay online all the time yeah, looking no, yeah. for when a figure is going to pop up for me to buy. That's why I like the subscription. And it's like everything they do is geared towards the subscription. All of a sudden, they throw something out there and say, "Oh, Except but doesn't even matter if you have a subscription." You know, they did go back and rectify it and decide to put it in a day of sale um earlier this month but it, or sometime this month but it, it sold out pretty quick mm, so yeah. but i've got them all i've got the hordak i've got karate i just put karate's review up on the website uh it hit this morning um the fighting foemen three pack and i mean i like i like all of them for the most part so karate was a, a little underwhelming um mm. i expected to like him a lot more than i did but he's still a solid figure so that's kind of been the big thing i've been checking out the past few cool. days Kristen, how about you? Um, I have been checking out Doctor Who. Um, Barbecue and I have been watching through. Um, we're avid Doctor Who fans, and we we just got a little bit behind on this season. I realized the season just just wrapped up this yeah. past weekend, but um, we uh, we just got a little bit behind watching through, and we uh, just the other night we watched. Uh, we're trying to get back caught back up. We just watched through a journey through the center of the TARDIS, and really enjoyed that episode. That was Thought a pretty was good pretty episode. Fun. Um, if you're not familiar with Doctor Who, it's, um, it's a really fun, interesting show. Um, it's about, um, the main character is a, from an alien race. He's called a Time Lord. He goes by the title of the Doctor. Um, no one knows his name. That's why he's, that's why it's called Doctor Who, because no one really knows this season who he they, is. Well, the last couple seasons, they've really <laughs> been pushing this idea that when his name is revealed, if he ever reveals his mm -hmm. true name, that something bad is going to happen. Mm -hmm. We don't know what it is, but there's some kind of, uh, you know, almost like a doomsday prophecy tied to this idea of him revealing his true name. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, he has a time machine. It's called the TARDIS, which stands for Time and Relative Dimensions in Space. Um, so that's how he gets around, um, travels around. Um, past, present, future, things like that, obviously. Now, is this the ninth or tenth Doctor that you're watching? We are We're currently the watching 11th. the eleventh. Eleventh Doctor. Is the TARDIS still a police box? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because the idea was that it broke something. It was supposed to camouflage itself, but the show started in, in 1963. 1963. And so it was a, a police, <coughs> uh, police call box, mm -hmm. you know, where they could lock somebody up in it. 
or somebody called for the police and um one of the circuits got damaged and so it's always it's been stuck. stuck and he could fix it but he likes he it. likes yeah. it so yeah. Um, so yeah, we just have been watching through some of that. Um, I am really enjoying, uh, Clara as a companion. She's just a lot of fun. Um, there's a mystery to Clara that the doctor's trying to figure out. Um, I understand he, it's resolved or he figures it out in the season finale is my understanding. Well, usually um, I'm all about spoilers, but don't tell me any. Yeah, no, so. I haven't. <laughs> I don't want to know either. I haven't to gotten go. there yet. But, um... He, um, he met her once in the future, and he met her once in the past. And, um, like, distant future, and distant And she died past. both times. And she died both times, and she has no recollection of any of this. So, he took her on as a companion, trying to kind of protect her and keep her safe, I think. And also to solve her mystery. And also to solve her mystery. He can never let a mystery go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, I'm really curious to see what's happening there. Um... If you're not a fan of, if you haven't really watched the show, I would encourage you to get into it. Um, the show started in 1963. Um, it was off the air for a while and got picked back up in 2005. Yeah. And that is a great place to start. Um, starts with uh, Christopher Eccleston is playing the Doctor then. That's the ninth Doctor. And um, it's it starts off just, a, some of the early episodes are just a little bit on the weird side. Um, it might take you a few episodes to get into it. Yeah, I'm like on episode <coughs> seven and I'm still... So <laughs> which one are you on, Gina? Um, I'm not any further than the last time we talked about Was it. Was that where the, the Space Pig? Your yes. past the Space Pig? Yeah, that, that two-part series. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With the... <laughs> Keep, what are they what, called? Those the Slovenes. Slovene. One yeah. of the big things to keep in mind was that Doctor Who was originally intended to be <coughs> a a children's educational, educational program. Show. Really? Yeah. Yes. So if you watch the original episodes, like it was, it was the idea was it would go back and forth, and you would have an episode that was history based, and then you'd have an episode that was science based. Huh. Like the first kind of mm-hmm. grouping of episodes. Yeah. Was was sort of a prehistoric, you know, caveman um, series. Yeah. It's kind of about, you know, prehistory. Cool. And then the next one takes place on a foreign planet, introduces the Daleks, but it's about, like, electromagnetism. Yeah, because that's how the Daleks get around. And science and all these things. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to go back and forth, but eventually they, they really <laughs> favored stories more than... Than um, education with than it. Than education, but once again, you still, you know... I. You still kind of learn stuff from Doctor <laughs> Who. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Gina, keep keep watching. Um, if you get to the introduction of Captain Jack Harkness, um, he enters into play during a two-parter. Um, the episodes are called The Empty Child and The Doctor Dances. If you watch through those and don't say, oh my gosh, this is freaking awesome, yeah. there's something wrong with you. <laughs> okay. Just, just saying. I- that kind of like, I would I would encourage um, anyone at to least, at least watch it through that. At point. least give it to the first Christmas special. <laughs> yeah, when they introduce the tenth Doctor. It's like the yeah. the My Little Pony and going all the way to the Evil Enchantress episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It. Yeah. I mean, it's just one of those shows that. Um, I mean, once again, like I'm saying, it's a children's show. I think when it first came on, they didn't re- they didn't hadn't fully got their rhythm yet. Yeah. And it just it's it kind of how most shows begin. Sure, like, it yeah, is exactly. And um. I mean, once again, watching back now, I think, you know, Doctor Who's usually always consistently good. It has its highs and lows. Mm -hmm. There's never anything that I'm like, oh, this is unwatchable. (laughs) But it's always a really enjoyable... um, Yes, it is. ...enjoyable show. I will say that it really, since the fifth... um, Since the fifth season when Matt Smith started, the show really has taken on a darker tone. Um, Well, uh, Stephen Moffat, is that when Stephen Moffat took over the writing more? That's probably I'm not complaining. I, I really, I really like it. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, like Matt it's Smith, more, it's more serious. It's more serious um, because the ninth Doctor is really, I mean, almost to the I point don't... of being goofy. Well, yeah. the Doctor there's is always goofy. humor. I mean, there's there. always going to be goofiness to the Doctor, but yeah, the the plots um, it is aren't, the, aren't quite. It so is off the, the wall. darn hardest show to explain. <laughs> it really, really, really is. <laughs> it's kind of like one of those. It's like. <laughs> if you didn't like this week's episode, watch next week's because it could be a completely different yeah. setup. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you might have like a real, you know, 
episode with like dinosaurs on a spaceship. That is so the true. Next week you got a western. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's, so true. So. Yeah. I'm excited. We'll probably talk more about it once we finish up yeah. um, and give people a little bit of chance to finish up the season yeah. as well. So, Cool. Well, let's move on into news. If, everybody, if there's anything else anybody you else know, has to... Speaking of Doctor Who, um, I, haven't, I haven't had a chance to really look into this much, but my understanding is that Stephen Moffat is, will not be writing it anymore. Oh, I haven't heard longer. that. Um, actually, Bradley Page brought it up. Oh, okay. <laughs> the other day, I, I, I have not had a chance to look into it, so I guess that's I should say that's Bradley. not confirmed. It's a different Bradley, yes. But mm-hmm. um, I'll look into that more and um, maybe have some more news on that next week. All right. Good deal. Well, let's, let's talk about uh, <laughs> some news items that we've got this week, then. Um, All right. You got um, some news, Kristen? I know there's been a lot of drama about um, who is coming back, who is signed on for Avengers 2. Um, I tried to do some research to just, you know, see what's going on there. I'm not sure if... I'll go ahead and call it. Spoiler alert. There's no way they're letting anybody not be in that movie. Well, of course. Of course. Of course. I mean, people are just... That's gonna be really hard. I think everybody's just playing hardball right now and fighting back by, you know... Stepping up their hardball Yes. Because... <laughs> Even more. Ten million <laughs> isn't enough. Well, yeah. you know. But um, my understanding is that um, Chris Evans is signed on. Um, I think... Captain America. So Captain America. So Captain America. Steve Rogers. I think Jerry Mer- Jer- Jeremy, Jeremy Renner, Renner is mm-hmm. signed on as Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Um, Robert Downey Jr. is in negotiations. Um, that's... All I have. <laughs> um, Chris Hemsworth, as far as I know, has not <coughs> signed on yet. Um, IMDb has everyone listed as rumored. So that well, wasn't really much help. Yeah, I mean, they but, really haven't done yeah, I mean, anything very official yet so, so with this movie. Yeah, I, have I, they set I, a time for it yet? Next year. twenty. Uh, it comes out 2015. 2015, two years, two years. sorry. So years. I think they summer, want to start filming Christmas? next year. I have no idea. I'm sure okay, it'll be a summer. summer. Probably summer. Summer blockbuster. But I don't know if that dispels anything for you. Um, apparently in an interview with Mark Ruffalo last month or earlier this month, <laughs> um, he said that he didn't even realize people were, you know, complaining about the, that people weren't going to sign on. Oh, wow. So, but he also said, you know, sometimes the actors are the last to know what's going yeah. on. Yeah. So... Everyone yep. wants a Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> <laughs> Plays the Hulk. He's got a green glow. Was that a Veggie Tunes throwback? A Veggie Tales throwback. <laughs> yeah, 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 that was. That was. So. <laughs> that, All right. Gotta bring in the Veggie Tales. <clears throat> well, okay. Let's talk about probably some of the biggest news that hit Geekdom this week the Xbox One. Xbox initial one. initial thoughts just <laughs> on the title. I was like, "Really, Xbox One?" Yeah, that because everybody was like, "Seven twenty, it's gonna be the Xbox Seven yeah, twenty. You know, right. what was confusing to me was everybody started calling you know the PlayStation the PS One. Sony called the original. Well, there was a PS. Yes, they they well, Sony changed the name of the PlayStation to PS One. Yeah. yeah. Later on, they actually called. Well, it was this, a smaller version. A smaller it was a version. It was but I had the PS One. But still, if you're referring to the system most of the time in the games, people say PS One. Hmm. And just like PS2 was the name, PS3, uh-huh. you know, PlayStation has a really nice system going where we know what's happening. Nintendo's mm-hmm. always favored something kind of weird. I still think Wii U is like <laughs> the stupidest name for... I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought Wii U was the stupidest name for a console. <laughs> until t- until today. Xbox until Xbox One. Yesterday. Which when you, when you get into it, and I mean, I, I understand their idea of it... it Wanting it to be everything in one. Yes, it's uh-huh. all in one entertainment system. It's really confusing because I have found myself if somebody if I say Xbox, okay, I'm talking about Xbox. Yeah. If I say Xbox, I might say I'm gonna go play Xbox. Well, I'm not saying I'm gonna go play my original Xbox. Yeah. I'm gonna go play Xbox 360. Yeah, the news comes. If I'm designating, I'll usually say my Xbox One or my you know original Xbox. But I think after all, people developed that nomenclature, and yeah. Xbox One is really confusing to me. Hmm. Um, 
Well, because it sounds like, it sounds like, it doesn't sound like the next generation. It sounds like we're throwing back yeah, to, Yeah, it's like you yeah. know, back like, to the basics or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly, which is the exact opposite what of doing. what this console yeah, exactly. is doing. So let's talk about what is actually going into this console. Jerry, do you have the specs on this thing? It's like eight, it has, um... <clears throat> yeah, I'm pulling an eight, up. eight core processor, um... I'm pulling up right now. It has an APU with eight 8664 cores, um, uh-huh. eight gigabytes of DDR3 <laughs> RAM. Mm-hmm. The memory bandwidth is 68.3 gigs, uh, a 500 gigabyte non replaceable hard drive. So that's, you know, Xbox, you could upgrade your hard drive. This okay. is non replaceable, although 500 gigs is pretty That's pretty, pretty big. Huge. It's pretty yeah. huge. I mean, that, that was the size of my original college computer had 500 gigabytes so this is the hard drive of a computer but let's think about it we're being told we're gonna have to install every game so i don't i just yeah so we'll non-replaceable just seems kind of weird all right so Um, and there's no way to add more like you an external uh, hard drive don't know at this point a Blu-ray no, disc is optional. Um, really? Optional? Oh, okay. I'm sorry, optical. Oh. Uh, I said <laughs> like, optional. It's I don't optical. I think it's optional. It's using, it's using uh, a Blu-ray. Which, so. you know, Xbox is kind of slow in the game of Blu-ray because the PS3 went had, with Blu-ray. had a Blu-ray player. And Microsoft went with high, uh, HD. Yeah. Went with HD DVD and they had the kit to be able to upgrade it to an HD DVD player. Yeah. And, of course, we know HD DVD... Um, lost that fight. Yeah. So sort of like, v, v, uh, blue, beta lost to VHS. Yeah. Yeah. And Laserdisc lost to DVD. Yeah. So, so those are the specs for it, which are pretty impressive. It, yeah. it basically sounds like a computer. Sure. <laughs> yeah. You know. I mean. Yeah, I mean, at this point, all, I mean, it's it's definitely more powerful, and I mean, it's more powerful in a really noticeable way. It's not like the Wii or the Wii U where people are like, doesn't really compare. I mean, I think it compares well to what Sony has put out, definitely. And, I mean, it certainly is, okay, just looking at the specs, and I'm not, like, a huge tech person to be able to break all that down, but it definitely is more noticeably more powerful than an Xbox. Well, because you have eight different... 360. Yeah. um, Because you have eight different core processors, they're that means that you can run multiple things at the mm-hmm. same time, which uh-huh. is one of the things that they're definitely pushing, is you can be in the middle <laughs> of the game and you can pull up your Facebook or you can pull up YouTube. Or Now, personally, I'm like, if I'm in the middle of the game, I'm going to be focused on the game and sure. not really care what's well, going on. Well, for someone like Jerry who does achievement hunting and yeah. things like that, That's that true. means, you can Google search that means he doesn't have to have a computer sitting here next to him and borrow my laptop like he likes to do <laughs> in order to pull yeah. up game facts. He can pause the game, bring it up on you know through yeah. just through Microsoft. That's not a bad. Xbox. That's not a bad point. That <laughs> there definitely are aspects where if you get stuck in a game, if you're trying to do something with an FAQ, yeah. if you're trying to look for something, it is nice to be able to bring it up right then and there uh-huh. without having to exit out of the game. Yes. And one of the things that they're talking about is being able to Skype. Um, and Interesting. To, you can dual screen your Skype, and much like a you know a Windows or even a Mac can do, you can, pop, you can split the screen, yeah. so yeah. your Skype is on one side, and this is through your TV. You're Skyping through your TV and okay. Connect, um, because the Connect is <laughs> video... Like, visual, it can see you. Yeah. Literally, it can see you. Yes. It can capture your motion, and it can capture your audio. And they're saying that they're amping up the audio and movement controls <coughs> to where, you know, other than, like, hardcore gaming, you're not going to need an in-hand controller. Your body will be the controller, which they kind of already did with the Kinect, but they're, they haven't gone into specifics about how much greater this is going to be. They're using really, like, florid, sure. you know... Um, and once again, I mean, we're, how far are we out from Xbox One? I don't think we've even heard of. I, I thought I read something about it coming out next year. I'm seeing, uh, it's announced, let's see, 
Yeah, I'm not seeing anything specific yet. Go to the actual website and see what they say. Um, because I know they have at least three games <coughs> yeah. already that are, like... Regardless, we are at that point where, I mean, I think we can expect to see some features dropped or, you know, dialed back and, and things like that. I mean, that typically always happens with... I don't... But I don't know about... That specifically as the body being used as the controller. I yeah. think they're really going to push that because that is their big <laughs> thing is this motion capture, you know. And yeah. one of the things that they said is um, with the everything is called real or yeah, real. So real audio is or it real can, Brad Bell. <laughs> yeah, R E E L. <laughs> um, but one of the examples it gave is that you can be standing in like a party. And the Xbox can learn your voice, and so everybody can be talking around you, and the Xbox can hear you and pick out your frequencies, I guess. That's cool. And, you know, be able to respond to you even though there's background. Because <laughs> I can't tell on. you how many times I've been in a crowded room and wanted to turn my Xbox <laughs> I know, up, you know. Obviously. Um, so, but that's a good, that's a good segue into uh, what I think we should talk about. Is this, is this just a cop-out? So that Xbox is marketable to anybody and everybody. Let's turn it, let's take it away from its original focus, which is gaming, yeah. and let's make it the ultimate entertainment <coughs> where, you know, even the people, like, you definitely, hard time gamers have Xboxes. Some, maybe most casual gamers have Xboxes. People who don't game do not have Xboxes. Yeah. So unless that's, they're children, yes, unless they're true. children, people, people yeah. who don't but game generally don't, don't have, have Xboxes. So is this you Xbox heard that here saying? First. <laughs> 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 but in the future, people who don't game will have Xboxes because they can Skype, they can watch live TV, they can Netflix, they can do all these things. I think that is what Xbox is going for. Sure. I, I I agree with you. Um, I I think the I think the most I'm trying to think the right word to, that I want to use here. I think the closest example to what it seems to me that Xbox is trying to do is follow the Wii model. The Someone, Wii was yeah. kind of that thing that it was like people were like, wait a minute, we just want to have one of these around. I mean, my gosh, people saw, came and played Wii Bowling for five minutes at your house, and they're like, oh my gosh, it plays, you can bowl, and it has old games, and we've got to have, and it tells the weather, <laughs> you know, yeah, we've yeah. got to have, we you can browse the internet, we got to yeah. have this in the house. Yeah. And honestly, like, I was reading some stats, and it was like the average person who owned a Wii bought, it was like, you know, it, it was like a really, really small number of games per year. Well, and we games, games and maybe it. <laughs> yeah. Wii games in general were pretty sucky. I mean, I own, <laughs> I probably own about six or seven Wii games because there just weren't enough that interesting yeah. to me where they were saying, you know, the Xbox, PlayStation, the average gamer bought a lot of games yeah. a year because people were buying the games, they were not buying the console or the experience yeah and I, I kind of feel that that's likely to happen that people you know if you're if you're making it as oh it's this wide reaching entertainment thing yes i use my xbox for other things i, mean, I do i, I netflix watch i watch day. netflix on yes, it every day and i sometimes browse the internet if i'm you know sit in the living room and don't you know I can browse the internet right there for a couple minutes. I mean, not, you know, not you can't really do much work. Yeah, I don't like internet and, um, on consoles. That's about it. I mean, I, I, I might watch something on YouTube on there. So it's neat to have those extra features, but it's the, but it's not extra features. That's yeah. what they're talking about. These aren't extras. These, These are, aren't throw This is what this they're is selling. The main you. thing. Yes. Well, uh, you know, uh, one time. Uh, Epic Review contributor Andrew Stokes. Uh, he was on a podcast too. He was on a podcast too. Okay, so two times. Uh, two time contributor Andrew Stokes was, you know, was telling me when I got home from work, uh, you know, the day they talked about the Xbox One, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Did you, did you, did you see the press conference?" And I said, "No, I was at work." And he said, "Oh, they're talking about how it's going to do this and going to do that, and it's going to do this, it's going to do that, it's going to, you know, have like sports and picture and picture and all this stuff." I said. Does it play games? Exactly. And he said, I don't know. They didn't talk about that. Exactly. <laughs> so. That is my point. Exactly. Are they 
going to lose their gaming audience to Which the PS4. They have said they have said that E3 is going to show well, off let's hope. the gaming uh -huh. aspect of it. Now, but the, X, the Xbox website has three games up um, that are, are already signed up for the Xbox One model. And one by Remedy, who created Alan Wake, which was a great X. One's a racing game. game, one's a time travel game, and one's a Call of Duty. Um, and the time travel and the Call of Duty look really good. I'm okay. not a big race, race car, like, yeah. it's a car racing. I'm and, not a big racing game. Yeah, it's not my thing game. either person but the time travel one specifically oh what is it called i don't remember what it's called but it doctor looks really who <laughs> no, i'm just kidding <laughs> but it looks really good okay and so you know that that's kind of where i'm <coughs> at with am i gonna save up for this console and get it when it first comes out are there really going to be that many games that i really want or is ps4 going to be the better option for me so i'm yeah. really going to be looking closely at at the differences between <coughs> between the models. I agree with you. Well, I want to talk about a couple of things real quick um, that are gaming related. And the biggest thing is this whole idea of used games. And if you buy a used game, you're going to have to like pay a code to, to, to put well, it into have to, play. You have to buy the code at retail. Yeah. yeah. And so... I was thinking the exact same thing, and I've read about this, and I'm I'm wondering, like, how is, like, Gamefly yeah. going to work? Yeah, how is Redbox so. going to work? Yep. It's when... going to be, once again, I, I think this is going to be an issue where, in terms of games, I think PlayStation, if PlayStation 4 says we're not doing anything like that, You've got to win. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Or Xbox is going to relent. It's going to be one or the other. And there's been so much backlash over this. People are upset. I understand the issue that games are getting more and more expensive. I mean, mm -hmm. games are, you know, a lot of games are as expensive to make as as, as films. Yeah. Yeah. Um, require Sometimes massive so. staffs. They take years to do. And... You know, people... It's not 8-bit anymore. <laughs> yeah, people, you know, they, they feel like, oh, wait a minute, if I buy a game for $60, play it, take it to GameStop, and another person buys it for 50 game companies never see any of that money. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big reason why micro well microtransactions have been introduced. You mm -hmm. know, that idea of buying little bits I and pieces <laughs> here and there. Um, I've become a little more accustomed to that. But really, the idea is, I think that any entertainment companies want to move away from people feeling like you own any content. They don't want you to own anything anymore. Yeah. They want you to rent everything from them, yeah. um, in a sense, that you're leasing it long term, you're short term. And it's just going to be our people that are younger. I mean, we're not old. We're all under 31 here <laughs> that are 32 I mean, we're all uh, most of us are younger than 30 some are early 30s still still once again i'm like to the point my initial reaction is when someone says next console you won't be able to play used games anymore without paying for them my initial thought was which kind of scared me because i played video games my whole life yeah. was like well, that's more money for comics and action figures. Yeah. I mean, really, yeah, that seriously. was my thought. That was my thought, and I'm like, did I really just say that? And I was like, yeah. I... My, my thought was, I guess I won't be playing video games. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just, once again, it's kind of one it's of those gonna things. It's going to turn people off as opposed yes, to make more money. But, but the here's the question is, does it pick up, I mean, are younger gamers comfortable with that? Have they grown up in a world where... You download an app for your cell phone, and when you stop playing it, you just delete it, and that's it. Yeah. Where when I was growing up, video games were a commodity. Hey, yeah. if you needed some money, you took your SNS, you know, your Super Nintendo games, your your, you you know, your Genesis, your Genesis games, <laughs> you, your PlayStation games. You took them to Funko Land yeah. or you know whatever existed, um, Babbage's or Electronics Boutique. Yeah. Or, 
you know, some of those other stores, you took them up there and, and got some money for them yeah. and got more games. Yeah, That it exactly. was part of the system. Yeah, and I think I think gamers in general like that system. Yeah. They like being able to get a credit on their account or get points towards you know, sure. awesome crap. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I, I think, uh, me, personally, as a gamer, I, I love that because I, you know, I was able to trade in my Wii and all my Wii games and all my Wii stuff and I got my Xbox 360. Probably a good trade. <laughs> it was yeah. very much so um, a good trade. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> Procrustus from Masters of the Universe Classics just no left off the, shelf, <laughs> off the shelf. Which, if you're listening, go to www.pogostal.com this week <laughs> and you can find an exclusive review of Pro Procrustus from Masters of the Universe Classics by myself, Barbecue17. And thanks to Poe Ghostel for letting me review him for the side. Awesome. Y'all keep talking. I'm going to put him back on the shelf. He, he jumped on purpose just to give you a talk. <laughs> yeah. He just, who just who is it that in. he knocked over? Uh, was that a bad guy? Name? That's Cobra Con. Cobra Con, okay. He is sometimes a snake man, sometimes one of Skeletor's evil warriors. Gotcha. He's more like a spy. Who's like taking him. out the bad guy? <laughs> anyway, yeah. So himself. we're just going to have to... I guess pay closer attention as this develops because they're really, I mean, they seem, they seem to not be listening yeah. to the yeah. hardcore it's, fans. It's, it's not been long. We'll see what happens. Somebody brought, and then I'm going to get off, get off the soapbox. Somebody <laughs> brought up <clears throat> a really scary thought. And what was said was in order to play an Xbox game or uh, Xbox one game, you had to check in online once every twenty four hours. Um, wow! You, you you have to you have to log in online initially to verify that you have the game that it's legit, uh -huh. and then to continue playing it once every twenty four hours, the system verifies that you still have the disc and and things like that or, or whatever. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. That's crazy. <laughs> here's and it's a security issue. They're trying to fight piracy, but yeah. here's somebody brought this up. What happens when Xbox moves on from the Xbox One? Are they still going to keep all that stuff in play? Are we going to have a generation of games that we no longer have access yeah, to? Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, we can still pull out Ataris. We can still pull out Nintendo and Genesis and our, our PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2s. I think the closest example you can put this to is um, MMOs, mm -hmm. is games that are online Go and try to play some of your early Xbox 360 games online and see if the servers are still there. Yeah. They're not. You have a game that you can't play anymore. You're losing a part. And I understand when other people are involved, uh, you know, eventually it's not worth it for the company to host that server yeah, anymore. Unless it's cooperative multiplayer with your friends, it, multiplayer online games, you just should expect you're not going to be able to play them online at some point. But imagine not being a. Imagine if, like, I would be devastated if somebody said, "Oh, your copy of, you know, Resident Evil Four, never gonna be able to play it again because yeah. Capcom took the servers down." Yeah. Like that would be a dark day in my life. Let me tell you, son, I would be. <laughs> yeah. Devastated. Yeah, I think that is really dumb. Where did they hear this? Is this a legit thing that they're talking about? Or oh, this, were they was, just... this was when they were talking about it's not going to be um, because one of the early things was talking about it would have to be all on. Uh, Phil Harrison has stated that single player games will require, will require an online check-in every 24 hours and that is reported by GameSpot, uh, Kotaku, and uh, PC Magazine. Mm. Guess I'm not going to be playing any online games. <laughs> no, 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 no. Any single player games. Any single player game. Yeah, like so. Any you, Xbox One game. It, it, it is verifying that you still have the disc there. It's verifying that it's still, that you still have internet access. It's verifying you're not playing on somebody else's. That is so limiting because, that like, so I, limiting. I play a game, usually, I play a game until I stop having fun. Yeah. And sometimes that's after I finish it, sometimes that's before. And so I'll take a hiatus for a few weeks before yeah. I come back. And then, so what do you do if you... No, 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 I'm sorry. It's not that you have to play every 24 hours. 
You have that to turn the Xbox on. Every you don't have to turn on every 24 hours. But let's say, for instance, I am playing um, the new... I don't know. Let's say there's there's a, a new tomb, Mario. Yeah, new, <laughs> no, a new there's a new Tomb Raider on Xbox 360. It's all single player. I cut. I, I I buy the game. My understanding is I buy it. I have to I have to put it on the system. I cannot play it from the disc. Mm -hmm. But I think I don't know if the disc still has to but be. Then why there don't or not. they just do all direct download? Why have discs at all? Why not just I know, download straight a from a little... server? That's a whole other question for a whole different day. And <laughs> and Xbox 360, if you watch, they're trying to do direct download because... I love direct download. But once again, you buy the game and you can't trade it in. They get money. Nobody else can ever use it. Yep. They love that. That's yeah. I mean, that's their ideal. Now, they have said that you will be able to trade your games online with other people. We don't know if that's you sell them back for Microsoft points or mm. actual cash credit or trade. There are some issues like that. But the idea is that that the game, just every 24 hours, um, it, it's just going to check in to make sure that it's it has to check in online or else it won't let you play a single-player game. You don't have to check in, but the Xop, Xbox is going to check in. Okay, mm. well, what... So what if something happens? A couple years ago, we had f four, three or four days in a row where we didn't have power after a bad storm. What if something like that happens? Well, we wouldn't have power, so we couldn't play. Well, Xbox. yeah, but what what happens but when the you Xbox turn it can't back be on? Checking in. The Xbox it, so when it comes back on, it would check itself. In. Okay. Okay. But if we went without internet, like if I said I bought a single player game and I say, well, I only like single player games. That's I mean, for the most part, that is true. Yeah. I do not like online multiplayer. Yeah. I rarely play online multiplayer games. Only I've, if it's only if you're getting together with your friends to play. Well, friends yeah, are. I played a little bit of Halo because I'm good at Halo. Yeah. And so, but that's about the. Yeah, well, I am good, good at Halo. <laughs> <laughs> the boy is very good at Halo. But... <laughs> so, uh, there's this time on a desert planet. There's a guy named Qui Gon Jinn. He needed me to win a Halo match for him. <laughs> He argued with my master, whose name was Watto. Okay. Yeah. Uh, regardless of what happens. Anyways. I don't like multiplayer. So if I said, well, I just play single player games. I don't need internet connection. Wrong. Yeah. Have yeah, internet you need connection. It. So does this force people to have Xbox Gold memberships? <laughs> I don't know that it'll force you to have an Xbox Gold membership. Um, but... I mean, you can have the silver that's free. Yeah. I think you just have to have internet access. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and there's another thing of, you know, our technology is constantly checking in on us. It, yeah. It's, you know, like, I was watching the news at my parents' house last weekend, and it was talking about how, you know, apps on your phone that have nothing to do with your phone records or your location ask for... <laughs> You know, to track your phone, sure. you know, and yeah, they, they're people it, they are selling the stuff. Information. Yeah, it's crazy. So. so, anyway, so this is something that we'll definitely keep an eye on, see how it's developing. There's a lot of talk about it online. All you have to do is Google search yep. Xbox One and you'll get get there's even of some crazy conspiracy theories that Microsoft wants the Xbox to fail. So, so, people that, will go so back. people will go back to the PC, um, which I would be okay right. with because I they've never PC made gaming. money off of it. So we'll, I don't yeah. know, we'll see. What oh, happens. and just to throw it in, um, there's not a solid release date yet, but um, they're planning to have it shipped worldwide before the end of the year. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh um, I think they are doing that because <laughs> the PS4 has not stated whether or not they'll have okay. it worldwide they'll have that worldwide before <laughs> let me say 14. that mattel has that giant castle grayskull coming out this year <laughs> and there's an xbox three xbox <laughs> one i'm holding the castle, castle grayskull, grayskull hand man it's it's <laughs> it's the clear yeah. winner i don't know if i should be putting a hand up or down but uh i mean that and that's a wild thing for me to think that i would rather buy a giant castle gray skull than you know well, a new video game console. Me, yeah for me right now my thought is i'm <laughs> going to buy as many xbox 360 games as i as can, can right and now. that's something else we haven't touched on will the xbox one be able to pe play it will not it is not, not backwards, backwards compatible. compatible okay it is not backwards of course compatible. not of course of course the more we talk about this the less i like, <laughs> sometimes, I like it sometimes these things you know i was really excited for xbox 360 i had one on launch day uh -huh. um i mean i can't think of a console other than i mean playstation at that point i just didn't have the money to pick i, I picked and chose and i mean let's be yeah. honest 
most games are multi-console these days yeah. uh, with with few exceptions. I mean, yeah. they're obviously everybody's got exclusives, but it's not as severe as, as it's been in the past, but yeah, I just, right I'm not excited. Right now the PS4 is is streaking on past yeah. the Xbox One. I'm so. really uh I'm really thinking uh I want to buy all the Zombicide, you know, role playing games that come out. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna spend your money on that instead of. <coughs> yeah. yeah, I'm tabletop gaming. That works for That's me. where it's at. Yeah. yeah, miniatures. It's fun. Miniatures. <laughs> okay. Well, our any we... other news, or should we get into the main event? Let's go to the main Let's event. Let's get into the main event. Oh yes. Oh, Let's Kristen's got a tweet of the week for us. So. Um. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Um. <clears throat> the tweet of the week this time comes from well this time this is the first time we're doing it da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> um, this comes from our own Twitter account which Get is my head. which is the epic review on Twitter um and that's the epic review on Twitter yes so at the at, epi- at, th- at th- th- epic epic review I don't, I, I, yes. don't, I don't tweet so no, we can know. tell so yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um we put up there we said. Netflix is considering Arrested Development Season 5, as well as a full-length movie. So that's why it keeps popping up. I was like, man, Netflix is all about some Arrested Development. I know. Well, you know what? I think that is the tweet of the week because that just really excites me. I am such a huge fan. Saturday. I am so excited for Arrested Development. Development. And I don't know when we're going to watch it because we're going to be gone this weekend. Did we ever think... (laughs) <laughs> that was going to happen. I mean, did we really ever think the rest of development and when was going to come when back? When it went off the air, no. No. We hoped. <laughs> but, the, I mean, this, this I think is I'm really, season two. really exciting. I am so happy. Yeah. And this is this is a trend that I think we're going to see more and more. It started with uh-huh. the webisode. Yeah. People putting short episodes of things online and now we've got these like look at the veronica mars kickstarter Uh i mean you got a bunch of fans that said hey we'll raise tons of money yeah and And they did new studio couldn't die okay there's a market we'll make a movie we got the money yeah Yeah. i think we're gonna see that because netflix has (sighs) their own um tv show called what is it Uh, called hemlock grove hemlock Hemlock grove Grove. we watched the first episode it was okay it was okay i want to watch a little more but i'm what i'm i'm and they have House this, of Cards is kind of their big yes, yes. episode. This is going. This is the future of <coughs> it is. TV. If I all think. of the Beatles were alive today and said, "Hey, just out of the blue, we're going to put on a concert," it would not be as big as new episodes of Rest of Development. <laughs> you heard that here. Heard I it. think it's all relative, there, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, that, I'm not sure. I completely agree with you, but I don't know. About after, that. Okay, I would Beatles is the here. Beatles live. <laughs> And Arrested Development is just below it. Okay, how about that? I don't know about that. So, um, but anyway, so let's go on ahead and get into our main topic of the day, which is Star Trek Into Darkness, rated PG thirteen. So, um, we're going to play a short clip from the trailer, and then we'll get on in. think you can't make mistakes but the choices you make could get yourself and everyone under your command killed but I believe in you Jim darkness is coming this could just be the beginning Getting a what? All out war. I request permission to go after him. I cannot allow you to do this. Jim, you're not actually going after this guy, are you? Let's go get this son of a bitch. That was from the trailer for Star Trek Into Darkness. Star Trek Into Darkness is the sequel to J.J. Abrams' 2009 Star Trek, which, in my opinion, is one of the best reboots of any established yeah. property, because not only does it is it bring new life into the franchise, but it did it in a way <coughs> that, that did not do away with continuity. Uh-huh. That it's operating in an alternate universe. Um, 
So let's talk a little bit about Into Darkness. This was one of my most anticipated movies of the year. Yeah, I think it was my number two. I think I had I can't remember exactly well. where I had it. Yeah. Um, I think we were at the same place. We may have been. Uh, let's let's just set it up a little bit. So Into Darkness takes place after Star Trek 2009. Um, the entire crew is uh, established. You know, we established all the characters in the crew in the original film. And during one of their missions, they, uh, Kirk, you know, they're, they're trying to save a planet, and Kirk makes a decision to break the Prime Directive, which it already seems like they're all breaking the Prime They've Directive. They've already, yeah, yeah. the anyway, Prime Directive was to observe. Yeah, and not and to not interfere. manipulate the, the planet's... Destiny, yeah. quote, unquote. And, uh, <laughs> but Kirk really breaks it by rescuing Spock um, and making the Enterprise visible to a whole group of primitive people yes so kirk lies in his report and spock tells the truth and puts you know basically gets kirk in trouble um in a sense and kirk you know kirk lies about it and kirk is removed from uh his his remove re re loses his he's demoted yeah he's, he's demoted. demoted he's no longer the captain of the enterprise and captain pike takes it back over with Kirk as the first officer. Uh, Spock's moved to another ship. The Bradbury. The Bradbury, yeah. Yep. Which I yep. loved. That was a very cool... I'm pretty cool... sure that was a nod yeah. to... Yeah, Ray Bradbury yeah, yes, was yes. definitely really good friends with Gene Roddenberry. Yeah, that was awesome. And obviously a huge sci-fi pioneer. Um, things start happening. The, the, the movie really brings up these ideas of what's, <laughs> you know, what's the right thing to do? I mean, is it based on morals? Is it based on your gut feeling? Or orders. Yeah, orders or policy. Um, what what becomes the right thing to do? And so logic, you know, one of the options. And so when the Federation um, starts, well, really Starfleet starts getting attacked by a terrorist known as John Harrison, who's played by... Benedict Cumberbatch. Mm -hmm. um, Love his voice. <laughs> starts getting play, uh, attacked. Events transpire that eventually Kirk is sent to bring in this terrorist. Mm -hmm. um, hunt him down. Hunt him down, yeah. and and told to you know basically shoot first. Yeah. So it so challenges. We know who shot first here. It challenges. <laughs> it challenges <Touché>. everyone <laughs> to start thinking about you know what does it really mean to do the right thing. Yeah. Um, so it's a very, very interesting uh, premise. I'm just going to come up and say, I, could, I don't think I could have been more pleased with this movie. Yeah. Um, I don't consider this a spoiler. spoiler. Unless Shatner himself would have shown up <laughs> or the ghost of DeForest Kelly, mm -hmm. I could not have been happier with this movie. Yeah. Or George yeah, Takei. I, I would agree. In some I way. I would agree. In some way. Yeah. I could not have been happier with this movie. Yeah. Um, I was thrilled with it. I mean, if you've read the review on the website, already gave it an epic. So, yeah, yeah I love this movie so much. I saw it twice. Um, oh my god! Yeah, she saw it on IMAX. Yeah, yeah, I saw it IMAX 3D the second Get time. Get out of town, Gina. Yeah. Uh, well, I was out of town. When so we were <laughs> to see Star Trek. So, but I'll just do a quick little review of the 2D versus the 3D IMAX. Okay. Um, the IMAX was awesome. I'm not a huge fan of 3D. The 3D mm -hmm. was okay, but I felt like I enjoyed the movie much more in 2D because 3D was really kind of distracting there was only one or two scenes only one specific scene possibly a second one where something comes like whizzing past i think the space jump was interesting it was it was pretty decent it wasn't much more spectacular mm -hmm. than in 2d if okay. i if i had seen it in 3d first i'm sure it would have been mind-blowing because okay. it was impressive enough in 2D. Very much uh -huh. so. Yeah, um, very much so. But it was it was when they're on the, the primitive planet and they're throwing those spears okay. after okay. them and yeah. one comes like whizzing straight past you and mm -hmm. I mean that one that's 3D done extremely effectively. Okay, that's um, nice. And that was about the only time that I really felt that. In fact, there were points where I felt like my 3D glasses were not working at all and I, it wouldn't have been the glasses because they're not electronic or anything. It would have been but I felt like I was seeing just enough of a phasing between the two images, even mm -hmm. through the 3D glasses. So, And that happened several times. So I preferred in 2D. If you really enjoy 3D, 
then you know by all means go and see it 3D. But I I preferred it. I, seeing like both of it, I preferred it in in 2D. Okay. But yeah, no, it was. This is by far the best movie. I will say it right now. The best movie that I have seen all year. Maybe perhaps all summer. It will greatly depend on the things that we movie. see. It was on Pacific Rim and Man of Steel. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, oh, two yeah. for me that could supplant it. And we'll this see. this is another thing that I'll say is when I go into a movie with high expectations, I usually come out feeling really like that movie was crap because my expect my expectations were too high. This is a movie that I went into with extremely high expectations and they went even further. Yes, they like did I was not job. disappointed in any way, shape, or form in this movie. I felt like it was smooth. <laughs> In the plot, I didn't feel like it was um, jarring or we jumped around. I felt like things made sense in chronological order. I felt like character development was spotless. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just all the way around, you know, the special effects, the the set design and the costuming. Um, it was all, I felt like it was all really, really spot on. Char yeah, you brought mm -hmm. up character development. And mm -hmm. one of the things that, I mean, whenever, you know... I felt the same way when the last trek was over. Yeah. I did too. This is a crew that I would love to see every week. I mean, I, I would uh -huh. like to see different stories focused on different crew members. I don't think Chris Pine would ever go for TV. <laughs> because I don't think there's a week. There isn't. There's not a weak link there. There isn't. And if I had to say that I thought there was a weak link um, before this movie, it was going to be Chris Pine. Really? Because let's be honest... Shatner's shirt is a hard shirt to fill. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Shatner, you know, is, I mean, he is. He is a force of nature. Yeah, but Chris <laughs> Pine couldn't, I mean, he couldn't go in there and try to recapture that. And he I didn't, totally I didn't, did I, didn't exactly. I didn't want him to. I didn't want him to come in and do a Shatner impression because I don't feel like. That's just a really hard role. I don't though. feel like anybody is doing an impression no, of anybody. No. Except Carl Urban sometimes, but I think that's just because McCoy, uh, DeForest Kelly gave McCoy such strong yeah. characteristics, yeah. and McCoy has a lot of element. I mean, he does have kind of that that country doctor vibe yeah. to him at times. That sort of a different logic than Spock. I mean, yes. he's got kind of that common sense common sense logic to him. Um, well, he's sometimes got, he's got human logic, yeah. which is filled with emotion, which I, is I, why it clashes with. Sometimes Spock so I feel much. like he channels DeForest Kelly. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, it's it's no, really, would, yeah. it's, 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 it's would, uncanny. Yeah. It's uncanny. But prior to this movie, if somebody <laughs> would have said, "Who's the weak link here?" Um, Chekhov simply because he hasn't been given enough time no, yet, and I no, don't feel like I, Anton Yelton got enough time in this movie. No, either. I felt so bad for him in this movie because they, th he <laughs> was portrayed as this. Poor guy, poor inept guy running around doing things that were not his job, yeah. you know? I I felt like he was portrayed as a little bit of a doofus, and which which is just so... Well, and we kind well, of once had again, that thought in there... the first one when he was trying to give the command to the computer, and the computer exactly. couldn't read his, yeah. exactly. his command because of his accent. I mean, well, I... I we know why Chekhov... I get that that was comic We relief, know why but... Chekhov was brought into the original series. This, yeah. He was brought in the second season to appeal to a younger female demographic, because he's a young guy, he's got a Beatles-style haircut in the original series. Yes. That's kind of the reason he was brought in. But, mm -hmm. um, I mean, he's his own character, and I just, I, I wish he had more time. The same with Ahura. I thought she got some really great scenes in this movie, but... We got to see a depth to her character yeah, that we did Yeah, there is more movies. depth than in the first movie there. Um, but she is very much still the token female. She's playing the romantic role. Mm -hmm. She's not... Well, the there's only one scene where she is truly, like, being empowered as a female, and mm -hmm. she is protecting the crew... Um, but she's, she's really just a kind of background character that she supplies the emotional, you know, the, the romantic, you know, we're mm -hmm. not really, we don't see her very often as a real power figure. Yeah. But, uh, once again, it's just, she just doesn't have a lot of stuff to, they don't give her a lot of options. I thought she had more in this movie. 
Mm -hmm. Um, she was able to work with Spock at the end a little bit, help Spock. Um, she is part of the shootout that takes place on the, yeah, Kronos. Uh, that was my favorite part for her. Yeah, when, yeah, when she, she came out, she said, up, yeah. "She said, you know, you brought me here because I could speak Klingon. Let me speak, Let Klingon. Me speak Klingon. Yes. Klingon." Yeah, I was like, "Yeah, hurrah, go yeah. girl!" <laughs> well, and if I mean, they've taken her character a lot further than the original, than the original series did. I mean, in the original series, not only was she one of the first, you know, she was the only female on an all male crew. She was a black female being cast in this role. Yeah. When she was unsure she should take it, everyone around her was saying, you need to take this yeah. role. Yeah. You know? And yeah. if you watch the show, if someone gets smacked around on the show, a lot of times it's her. Yeah. You know? But but, but it was still, this was still huge. That, yeah. that was I a mean, there huge was a really step forward. Powerful element <laughs> there. And so the fact in the original that, series, I mean, let's talk about the Kirk of her kiss. Uh-huh. That's a... Uh-huh. Interracial, interracial kiss, kiss. Uh, you know, like with Family Guy, woo, uh, and the, 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 the voiceover for that. I mean, that was a really big <laughs> That was a deal. big deal. Yeah. And so, and I think it's the point, I I don't know that it's a weakness of any character, any actor or actress, I think it's simply weakness of, there's a lot of great characters, yes. and they're from a TV series. Exactly. A and TV, you've got, yeah. you know, seasons of this TV series where you have developed character, and you have individually fallen in love with each of these characters, and in a two and a half hour long movie, there you're not right, there's much not time. enough time yeah. to give everybody the the face time that they deserve. See, I, I think that she's portrayed as a very strong female character. There's just you know, there's only so much time yeah. to be able to show that. Yeah. yeah, and definitely that happened more in this film than yes, the previous. Definitely. One. Well, let's. Um... Andrew, actually, is telling me about... Andrew loved Star Trek 2009. I mean, he was like... I think he saw it in theaters four times. Wow. I mean, mm. he really loved it. Was it was a great film. It is it one was, of his favorite yes. movies. Andrew was very disappointed with this movie. Really? I, I'm going to talk about... Andrew's texting me some of his comments right now. I did have a longer conversation with him the other day. Um, about why he didn't like this movie. And so I want to bring up a few of his comments before we jump into spoilers, because there's really not much more about this movie we can say. That's very true. Until we get into spoilers. But Andrew actually says differently some of the things we just said. Um, he said he felt it was a very predictable movie and not that exciting. A lot of the background characters weren't as well written as the first one, although I'm trying to think of what who would be what background characters I even recall much from the first one. Cause yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I thought Pike was pretty well done in yeah. both of them. Yeah. Um, Ahura was especially poor, which I thought Ahura was improved, poorly written. Um, I thought she was in, not improved like the first one was weak, but I thought she was given more was, and more, yes. more strength in this yes. movie. Yeah. Andrew says, I did like the movie and plan on watching it again at some point, but overall thought it got boring near the end. I disagree completely. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and I kind of wonder if halfway through this movie they start showing Iron Man 3 and Andrew's confused. <laughs> no, I'm just, just kidding. Uh, Iron Man 3 was pretty good. Um, I just didn't care for it. Uh, the first one felt fresh. The second almost felt like an imitation. That's what Andrew says. I'm not sure there's a lot more we can say until we get into spoilers, um, but Kristen has something. I did want to bring up, I had, um, pretty sure I posted the article to our Facebook page, but I read an article that talked about, um, the si- some of the science uh, behind it, you know, looking at, looking at it through, you know, how did, how did the laws of science apply to the movie? Did they stick to what would really happen and things like that? Um, the article was written by a scientist who, um, his... She um, started off talking about the volcano scene mm-hmm. at the beginning because she was a volcanologist, and she she said that that that, that <laughs> scene that was, which makes me so I know isn't that yeah. funny? Is that that funny? Vulcan? I know, right? the volcanologist. Live long isn't that funny that the Vulcan is in the volcano? <laughs> yeah. But anyways, um, <laughs> but anyways, um, she did say that the um, 
they made the volcano oh, look very, very realistic. Okay. Um, for the most part, all, a lot of that was spot on. She was really, like, almost giggling with glee at how how good of a job they did there. What bothered her the most, though, was that, um, if I'm remembering this correctly, the whole reason they had to break the Prime Directive and um, have the Enterprise come up <laughs> by the water was because the shuttle couldn't <laughs> handle the heat. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't the shuttle be made out of the same material as the Enterprise, probably? But the shuttle was inside of the volcano, and the Enterprise just had to be above it so they to could beam him hold out. On, hold on, hold on. Um, what she said was that um, when a ship enters a planet's atmosphere, they're going through temperatures that are thousands of but degrees higher. But they have shields. Higher. They have shields on the Enterprise that make it so that they don't well, once incinerate. again there was no issue well, with the enterprise going i'm in. talking about uh, not just that i'm talking about like you know ships what well, we've had rockets you know enter the yeah. atmosphere and be fine that is hotter than a volcano mm. erupting even yeah. the hottest volcanoes erupting so she didn't understand their that logic i don't think it was the heat that was <laughs> bothering it it was the the soot and the smoke and the ash that was was well, getting in the engine. engines and the engines were overheating because of, of the Could stuff be. that was in the air and not Could necessarily be. because okay. of the heat itself so. but once again if you want realism they always have the news so, <laughs> you know if you want realism you it was, don't go watch a film called star trek <laughs> it, it was Every an single... interest it was just an interesting article yeah. you know, to look yeah, at no, that's cool. okay it how would this really happen in real life and i mean she went she went into a lot more things than than just that i'm like i said i'm pretty sure i posted it to the facebook page so feel free she said, to there's no it way out. that kirk could have slept with two cat women at the same time <laughs> Yeah. Which was a... She did not get into the laws of physics. Yeah, this, which was a so great throwback scene, to. Now, where Kirk's, does the tail go? Kirk's insatiable appetite. Oh, All right, gosh. well, let's roll that reel forward and talk about some spoilers. Let's do it. Okay, so spoilers are open. I, I mean, once again, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna name the biggest spoiler. God! That's the biggest spoiler. I mean, once again, we were told over and over that, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch was going to be this mysterious character. Um, Andrew was telling me that, you know, J.J. Abrams just flat out, came out, flat came out and said he wasn't con. We know Benedict Cumberbatch at one point said, I wish they would just tell people who I was because I think it's going to ruin some yeah. people's enjoyment of the movie. Benedict Cumberbatch is Khan. Yeah. He is Khan. Mm -hmm. uh, he is Khan Noonien Singh, who appeared in the original series episode Space Seed, and then appeared in the, the film Wrath The Wrath Star Trek II: The, the Wrath, Wrath of, of Khan, Khan, played by legendary <laughs> um, Hispanic actor Ricardo Montalban. Mm -hmm. Which my dad and I, my dad thought that he was the. Um, original teacher in the, in the Mask of Zorro movie. He wasn't. But um, there was something else He was that in he an did. older Zorro movie. A lot older. He was on Fantasy Island for years. He's in the Spy Kids series. Yeah, he is yeah, the Spy he, Kids. He, he's, he's the grandpa? He's grandpa. Yeah, he's the grandpa. Uh, what's his last, what do they call him? Grandpa something. He was in a wheelchair. Yeah. But there was some other really big film that he was in. Uh, but anyway... So I thought that was funny that my dad. He's in the episode of Family him. Guy with the cow. He voices the cow. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, so Benedict Cumberbatch plays him. <laughs> um, spoilers are open now, so this is a movie about Khan. Um, I would disagree. I would say this is a movie about. Kirk well, learning the... Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. The, movie, the movie's conflict centers around Khan, yes. who has been released from sleep. He's, he's still a, Yeah, he's still a genetically modified super soldier. He's been released um, along with 72 of his... Well, his shipmates, his 72 shipmates have not been released. Yeah, they're still in their Khan priorities. is released by Admiral Marcus, who's an admiral of Starfleet, who is really concerned about what's happening with the Klingons. I they, don't think he's so much concerned as I think he wants... He just wants... To I think he go wants ahead to and annihilate. Go, yeah, and go to well, war. Yeah, I mean, with I think the he's concerned, and that therefore he wants to take care. If of the, the Klingons go to war, that they won't <laughs> be able. That Starfleet is not going to be capable of doing anything. Mm -hmm. 
remember the last movie they lost a lot of ships yes, and they starfleet did. is exploratory they're not a military organization yeah. yeah and so he wants to take out he wants to take out the klingons yeah. wants to destroy chronos he basically um, wants the preemptive attack. He wants to be, he he wants them to, he wants, oh gosh, someone help me. <laughs> he wants to be the first, he wants to make the first move. Yeah, absolutely. He doesn't want to wait for yeah. the Klingons to come and attack them. Yeah. Khan is upset because um, Admiral Marcus had unfrozen Khan to use his his skills, his expertise, and his, his, his brutality. His yes. brutality um, to make better weapons so they would be able to defeat the Klingons. The yeah. Klingons. Um, so we really have a kind of a three-way scenario. There's Admiral Marcus who wants to destroy the Klingons um, without any warning hesitation. There's Kirk who's trying to follow orders but also figure out what is actually happening. And he wants to get revenge for Pike. Yeah, he wants revenge for Pike because mm -hmm. Khan kills Pike in this movie, so another big spoiler, um, prior to anybody knowing that he's Khan. And Khan is really trying to... Get his crew. Get his crew back. Yeah. His 72 individuals. Which, um, does that have any throwback? I know we watched Wrath of Khan a few weeks ago, but to the... To the um, yep. the show, was there yes, an yes. issue of he, he wanted to get his crew back in the um, show? In the show, they were stranded and they came aboard. The Enterprise got brought them aboard from the ship, the Botany Bay. Yeah. And um, Khan wanted to take over the Enterprise to get his crew. Um, to t he wanted to take over the Enterprise so it would become their ship. Yeah. So him and his crew could get away. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. But n nothing like he was the only one that was out of cryostasis. And I he think was there were a couple that were out of cryo, but he actually brought some Enterprise members with him. Yeah. He brought some, inter some Enterprise members willingly went with Khan. Yeah. Um, because he was so persuasive. Mm hmm So, um, jumping in and talking about this movie, I mean, and going to more performances, Gina, you're absolutely right. Um, I mean, this movie, when it really is about Kirk learning that he's not invincible and he can get his crew killed yeah yeah because uh, that's that's the biggest thing when he and pike are having their argument in pike's office and mm -hmm. he's just been demoted you know the thing they're kind of jabbering at the same time angry at each other but he says in the so many years i think he says five but it might not be five in the so many years that i have been in command how many members of my crew have I lost? Not one. Not one. Mm -hmm. And so his original argument is he has never lost a crew member mm -hmm. since he's been captain. Now, I would say if he were to go back and watch the first movie, he actually lost lots of people underneath his captainship yeah. in that film. But wow. regardless. Anyway, you know, and so that's his... He, he has this ego about him. You know, he's wanting that five-year mission. You know, saying, yeah. we're the best. We have the, the newest mm -hmm. starship in the whole fleet. You know, like, I have never lost a crew member. I'm invincible, and my ship is invincible. And so it was very much so a testing of, mm -hmm. okay, are you really that invincible? Is your ship really that invincible? And uh -huh. we get to the point where the ship is quote-unquote dead. She's yeah. gone, sir. That's what Scotty says. You know? And what's interesting is the whole situation, they are stranded outside the Klingon neutral zone. Mm-hmm. There is a ship that's coming to fire upon them. The warp core, yeah, is dead. This is they're already back to Earth when this happens. What do you mean? When the warp core becomes unaligned, is that what you're um, talking about? Scotty's oh. on the ship for that because Scotty's the one that says that. So it's after this is this is this is before they they jump. This is when they're trying to fix things. That... Well, yeah, I mean that what the warp core shuts down or something, yeah. right? But it's the Kobayashi Maru. Yeah. I mean, in in it honestly, really is. it's an it, unwinnable situation. It's 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 almost exactly similar to what happens yeah. in the Kobayashi Maru. You're right. You're absolutely um, right. So it's interesting so that Kirk, Kirk really is, does have to go through it. He has he's to face being the Kobe tested. Action yeah, he really has to face an unwinnable scenario. Yeah. You know that is an interesting throwback because in the Wrath of Khan, the be at the beginning of the movie, it's um, the Kobe um, what's her name? Savick. Captain Savick <laughs> is mm -hmm. 
is doing the Kobayashi Maru, and um, she keeps asking um, Kirk all through the movie, "How did you handle this?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. So it's kind of a throwback to that, I guess. You could say. I cheated. I don't believe in no win scenarios. Oh yeah, yeah I guess what? It's, Here's it's your no win scenario. Yeah. And this exactly. one puts him in this that one situation. Makes him face it. He can't cheat his way out, which is interesting. <laughs> Until Scotty pulls it out and he shuts down the other. He he's in the engine room of the yes. other, yes. The other yes. ship, and but that was very fun. It still that causes awesome. Kirk. Let's 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 talk about a couple things here. Um, one of the biggest things we've said that Khan's in the movie, and I mean I think we've already said, and I don't want to go on too much, but while there may not be enough room for every individual. The performances are excellent in this movie. Mm -hmm. Peter Weller as Admiral Marcus becomes a great second villain. I mean, yeah, there's another villain in this really movie does. that we don't even realize. I don't know. His kind of lazy eye kind of bothered me the whole time. <laughs> well, I mean, that's just, you <laughs> know. It, like, his right eye is, like, slightly closed a little bit more than... <laughs> the man was, Robo the man was Robocop. Yeah, for crying out loud. And, yeah, yeah and Buck I've never seen that movie. you never seen Robocop? Nope. Or Damn. Buck Rubon's eye? Nope. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I thought Peter Weller was a really good villain. Uh -huh. um, I thought he was a good foil for, once again, you've got someone who's, like, so lawless and con, and mm -hmm. then you've got somebody who sort of represents the law yeah. and policy and procedure that, in a way, Kurt kind of hates and Spock loves. Yeah. But then you've got Khan, who's kind of that lawless go-with-your-gut that Spock hates and Kurt mm -hmm. loves. I mean, in, in that sense. Yeah. Biggest thing for me in this movie was seeing the times when Kirk and Spock worked, or sorry, Kirk and Khan worked yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. That blew my mind. That was very cool. And Kirk fully knowing, I don't think we can trust this guy, but realizing, I'm not sure we have much of a choice right now. Yeah, yeah. well, he says, uh, Scott, Scotty and him and yes. Khan are on the other ship, and he, Scotty goes, um, I thought this guy was helping us, and Kirk says, I think we're, I'm pretty we're sure we're helping him. him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It just was really cool to see those two. I mean, the space jump scene was fantastic, but seeing those two working together uh -huh. was just so wild. It was so unexpected. Because yeah. they were brought together in such a different way yes. than they were brought together in, in Space series. Seed yeah. and then Wrath of Khan. I mean, uh -huh. so that was a really... Which in Wrath of Khan, they were technically never physically in the same no, way. The they same were no, they were not. It Wrath was, of Khan... It was all intellect yeah. and, and The original ships. series was Kirk fight. I mean, Kirk fights him. Uh, Wrath yeah. of Khan is all ship to ship, you know, oh. never in contact with each other. Um, it's a chess game. Yeah, it yeah, is. A, it that's really a good was, way to put exactly. it. This was very, very different. Let's talk about some of those differences because one of the things that I was, you know, Andrew, when I was talking to him out there, had brought up, he didn't feel that Khan should have been in the movie. Um, An Andrew, as far as I know, has not actually seen Wrath of Khan or much of the original series, but he felt that that Khan should not have been in this movie. His his thoughts, and I mean, I, I might be I might be butchering them, but I, I'm trying to be as as Truth truthful yeah. as I can. Yeah. Um, was that this is its own universe? This is its own thing. Why retread old ground? already and now see i feel the exact opposite because you know when he's talking to um the older spock and he says ha did you ever encounter a man named khan and spock says you know i promise that i was never going to tell you information that could alter your destiny this is your mm -hmm. you know this is your life and you have to i thought i loved the fact that you know Yes, it's a different universe, so they're experiencing the same things, but they're experiencing it differently. Yeah. So th the same things, it's kind of like a Bioshock Infinite sort of thing. Could, yeah. You know, there are going to be consistencies in every universe, and then there are going to be factors. Yes. And yeah. I loved that aspect. Yeah, to yeah me, I, this I thought one, that was fantastic as to well. To me, this was not at all, Brad and I were discussing this, this was not a remake of... Or even what you would call a reimagining. It was a throwback. This was a yeah. let's parallel this. I <laughs> yeah. mean, let's let's talk about the ultimate spoiler. In, in one of the movie scenes that I mean, there's there's only a few scenes in movies that are guaranteed to bring tears to my eyes. 
And still at the end of Wrath of Khan, when mm-hmm. Spock goes in and, you know, to fix the yep. fix the warp. the warp core and, you know, is overcome with the radiation and he's dying and Kirk's on the other side and can't do anything. Mm-hmm. And they have that exchange and, you know, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. And he says, you are, you know, you always have and will always uh always be my friend Mm -hmm. and then spock does the you know the vulcans yeah live long and prosper prosper against the glass i mean that scene brings me tears every time Uh i watch it i mean i don't have you know i'm not like balling but i'm it's emotional it's powerful and you've had that friendship it's a powerful scene because we watch it at the end of all their years of friendship Mm -hmm. Uh this one was interesting (laughs) because as the audience we're watching it at the beginning of a friendship, yes. and the friendship, but we know what could potentially mm-hmm. happen. We know what's you know possible or potential. Um, we know what their friendship is supposed and, to be, it's supposed and to the movie into. throws it around <laughs> by having Kirk be the See, one I loved that. who uh-huh. sacrifices himself uh-huh. in this film. Kirk is the one who sacrifices. Which is the development of his character exactly. in this exactly. film. It is. Speci- it had to be Kirk for this film yep. because of his journey. His we we are journey. seeing a very different side of Kirk, um, and it's interesting. And yeah. I thought, once again, J.J. Abrams wasn't rehashing old scenes. He was taking, like, alluding to them, but using yes. them for something different. Yes. To show the same scene, but doing it in such a different way. Yeah. Um, there are constants yeah, in each universe. Yeah, yeah. exactly. There yeah. are constant But there things. are variables, yes. And I mean, you know, whether we're putting it as an in-universe explanation that Khan is a constant, or whether we're putting it in a, you know, a, a storytelling, a pop culture um, structure and saying, Khan is the most recognizable bad guy for original Trek. Uh-huh. I think there's one other guy who shows up more. I think it's, um, gosh, what's his name? Trelane? I think, I think I'm... That name rings a bell, but yeah. I really don't know. I think know. he shows up, like, a couple more times. Um, Khan is it. I mean, Khan's the big baddie. Yeah. And so, you gotta deal with him in the series. I mean, imagine a Batman series that never dealt with the Joker. Yeah. Imagine a Spider-Man series that never dealt with Green Goblin or Dr. Octopus. Mm -hmm. Or or they said, we're going to make an X-Men series and it's never going to deal with Magneto. Yeah, seriously. I mean, it's one of those things. (coughs) It sort of needs to be there. I felt they did enough of their own thing with it. They did it really differently. Mm -hmm. Um, But they threw back to it because once again, we're not talking about a reboot we're talking about an alternate universe. Yeah, so yeah. in story, there, I, I have a different expectation for what's happening. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so. no, I think they pulled it off exquisitely well. Mm-hmm. So, um, I want to. I, I like some of the little references. To, I did too. Uh-huh. So my the, favorite was the ship that they said that from the mud incident. Yes, yeah, that which was is great. from Harry Mud's Space Pimp. Uh, uh, Mud's you know, women, right? Yeah, Mud's Women's the episode. But <laughs> but I mean he's this kind of this sleazy dude that, you know, kind of traffics women and stuff, yeah. you know. Yeesh. Um uses a like a drug that makes them really attractive and appealing to men and stuff. Interesting episode, but uh they they say the ship's muds, you know. So they're kind of referencing something Although, in the lead-up to Into Darkness comic by IDW Comics, there is a character named Mud, but she's female. Mm. Um, whether J.J. Abrams actually based it off of that comic leading up, I, I imagine probably not. It's probably it's throwback yeah. to the original series that think. IDW built off of. Yeah. But, you know, seeing the... Um, there was a couple things. The uh, One of the Enterprises was on in the background. Um of yeah. the NXO one, yeah, um, did see that. It is is in the background into the uh, from 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 the series Enterprise. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there were some cool little references now this, like this that. This was very subtle, but um, when um, when they first pick up John Harrison on um on Kronos, uh, you know, and we're still trying to decide is this Khan or not. Yeah. Um, I noticed he's got that really long jacket on, mm-hmm. and I noticed that the collar on his jacket 
has the exact same ribbing on it that Khan's uh, V-neck shirt yeah. does on Muscle the original. Shirt. Yeah. You know, in uh, it in made the me feel Khan. awkward the whole yeah, movie. Yeah, I know. I had seen his man boobs there. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> so that was just a really subtle kind of throwback slash tip off. I in was the like, trouble. As soon as yeah. I saw that, I was like, yeah, that's definitely Khan. So. That's a nice subtle touch. And we but, had, I mean, we yeah, had that was really about cool. the really Oh, oh, there's a tri- cool. there's a triple a triple plays a, a key <laughs> a very key role, key role, role actually movie. yeah um bones what are you doing with that dead triple <laughs> we, 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 we've, we've talked about you know we've we've gushed over what we like about the movie um I I I, I still consider it epic I have a couple things um I'm not sure I consider them flaws of the movie they're things I would have changed or done differently but um. I sort of want to talk about those a little bit because I mean Andrew had his complaints and I don't feel the movie was boring at all. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel some of those things. I didn't feel it was. Um, I I didn't think it was you know predictable in a sense. I knew exactly what was going to happen all the time. Although I did call that bomb. I when yeah, uh, yeah she, she did. Called <laughs> the bomb. I, totally called I walked. I tur- I turned to and Chris and I said, "He's either a bomb or he's going to detonate a bomb." When Kirk was <laughs> and and speaking of the um, we spoke about Doctor Who earlier. Yep. Did any Doctor Who fans? Notice a familiar face in there. Yep. No. Um, just, no Clark. Oh yeah. Just just bringing that up. No Clark yeah. who plays. Uh, <laughs> who played the ball? Who plays Mickey? He's a, a little Mickey. older and a little yep. thicker. But, so, but it's him. But that was him. <laughs> Mickey was Rose's, there. Uh, Rose's boyfriend. Causing trouble job. as usual. <laughs> so, yeah, that's true. That's Mickey. Uh, or was in this universe was he Ricky? Oh, uh, Mickey or ooh, good yeah. point. You'll there's get that. There's an You'll get there. Okay, keep watching. Like, so I, I know he's. Um, <laughs> let's talk about anything that you maybe had a, a complaint about, or something that you didn't. I I wouldn't call this a complaint. I'll okay. call it an observation. Um, Ahura, when she first goes to talk to um the um Klingons, her first lines in um Klingon sound very reminiscent of Natiri and Avatar. And that's when I leaned across and I said, didn't she play Natiri in Avatar? So I felt like she was kind of ch- channeling that that um, that person Interesting. in, in okay. that one second. It's just the first couple of lines, and it may Maybe be that they have the, a sim- the same, similar same, sound or yeah, something. Yeah, uh, Similar or word something. or something. Um, but even when I saw it the second time, I was like, yeah, that's... That's, that, yeah, it, I saw it the second time, too. That's okay. the only, only thing that I, and it was, but I'm not complaining. I mean, she, she pulled it off well. I mean. Okay. It just it's, caught your it's, attention. Yeah, it just. Chris, <clears throat> any complaints that you have? I don't really think that I have any complaints, okay. honestly. I have two. Um, one hit me in the theater, but I was able <laughs> to look it over. One hit me a day or so later. Um. The first was, I'm always happy to see someone make an appearance. And we know that in this universe, uh, Gina mentioned earlier, you know, Leonard Nimoy plays Spock Prime. He plays Spock, the same Spock from the original series, from all the movies, you know. But he's now in this universe because of what, you know, the time, the time events that happened in the last movie. I, I love seeing him. I thought mm-hmm. it was great. I mm-hmm. thought it was important. It felt a little odd that his whole point in the movie was just like, oh, we're going to call Spock. And he's like, do you know a guy named Khan? Yes, he's very dangerous. I mean, it was kind of a... Yeah. I I really thought maybe there would have been a better... Like, I would have liked to see him at another point. Um... I, I thought he could have been utilized better. Yeah. Because any, I mean, Leonard Nemo is one of those actors that anything he says comes out with just such a sincerity uh-huh. and a wisdom to it that it would have been great to have him give like a really good line about, well, you know, like, I mean, Spock has lost Vulcan. You know, Zachary uh, Quinto's okay. character, Spock, yeah. has lost Vulcan. Well, I would say. Spock Prime has lost Vulcan. He's too. lost Vulcan too, um, in a sense. But it would have been interesting because they're establishing, you know, the new, new Vulcan. Vulcan. So it would have been interesting to see him like interact with him in a way, and you know. Well, I think his purpose, because one of his lines said, um, "Well, Zachary asks, did you defeat him?" 
Mm-hmm. And Spock responds by saying, we did, but at a very great price. Yeah. yeah. And I think, because at that moment right there, the, that purpose is foreshadowing. Yeah. He's foreshadowing the fact that it is, in fact, going to be Kirk who is going to be the sacrifice. Because he was referring to himself. Yeah. I was the great sacrifice. You know, I... Yeah, that yeah. you're, you're going to have to do something, yeah. and then it, it throws it on throws it, it on its head. Being, We're something yeah. completely different that we yeah. weren't expecting. So, yes, it was a kind of, <laughs> we want him, we want Nimoy to come back, we want to see him again. There's not a whole lot of plot purpose to it. I, I just wish, I just think he could have been better utilized. Yeah, and I, I, do don't have, I don't have a, a perfect way of saying how I would have done it, but... I didn't have three and a half years or two and a half years to work on this movie. You yeah. Know? Well, yeah. So, and two, I don't think they're wanting to really kind of mull around in this alternate universe kind of thing. Yeah, kind of. But, I mean, Spock very much so is, we're reestablishing that this isn't the first. Sure. So, you know, but, and so I think they just they just want him on the outskirts because we don't want to make this a and big... And I, I didn't want him as a main character, no. but, but I felt that the way they used him was less an easter egg or a throwback and more of an easy way to get to a narrative point rather than having someone be ambushed by Khan yeah. or having something happen that was dramatic. It was very much a talking point exposition you know just and i didn't mind it yeah the second thing and and everyone might have different feelings about this i'm very open to a movie where we see a hero sacrifice themselves and the sacrifice is significant Mm -hmm. Uh that it means something even if it's you know whatever happens um Empire Strikes Back is a really powerful movie because oh, you end the movie with the heroes. I mean, did they win? Did they not win? Yeah. We don't really, I mean, we're not really sure. I mean, not, not you know, we're not, we're confused. No, we're just not sure if what they've gained is worth anything, you know, for what they've lost. Hans and Carbonite, character is literally frozen. Um, the Wrath of Khan truly ends with Spock giving his life is there a hint that he's going to come back yes yeah. because he lands on the planet where the, the genesis genesis, of, genesis device has detonated there's a hint but for the characters spock has truly died and the sacrifice is really uh-huh. significant kirk gets brought back through khan's blood um, I through don't a ha- serum developed through a from, serum developed from his blood, which was the whole point at the beginning. Is that you know? <laughs> yeah, he, he that brought that little I, girl yeah. back. I, what is it? He brought the little yes, girl back. Yeah. Yes, that is true. He brought the little girl back through the blood. <laughs> so we knew that it could happen. Yeah, yeah. that that's that and is. Then the tribble, and then they the bring the tribble back. back. They yeah. bring the tribble back. McCoy brings the tribble back. I I just I I I don't know. And part of me was like. If the movie would have ended with Kirk being, I'm, I'm doing the finger thing. Air quotes. Air quote. Being dead, and the next movie beginning with, like, them bringing him back, I think the movie would have ended more powerfully. Do we know that there's another movie coming? I, I would assume so. I would absolutely <laughs> assume. I, sp- I don't, I haven't heard that anything's been green. I mean, they I didn't know a Star Trek so. Three was coming, but they... You know, they killed Spock at the end of two and then made the search for Spock. I mean, it's one of those things that I don't feel that would have been incomplete or that it would have... I felt it would have made a more powerful film that Spock... that Sorry, that Kirk's sacrifice would have had more impact um, I mean, for everybody involved. Have, they could have shown the triple and people being like... <gasps> You know, As even that end. wouldn't have bothered me, you yeah. know, but, but leaving it for a third movie, yeah, even that would have been okay, but... Yeah, so, anyways, that was one of mine, um, that was one of my complaints. I will say, one of the complaints that Andrew brought to me was that he said he felt that this movie, that nothing changed, he said that with the first Star Trek, you have Vulcan destroyed, that he thought that was a game changer. He said he felt with this movie that nothing changed. 
I personally disagree. Mm. I think one, we're now close to war with the Klingons. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we don't know I'm, what's going more than on. Likely, at this point. I mean, that would be a great plot point for the third movie. Oh, absolutely. I you think know, that's I a mean, great way to why introduce Why did you come them. in and ambush ambush our planet? Yeah. Uh, number <laughs> two, I mean, character wise everybody's experienced a more profound loss. Everybody's really had to question... Kirk has learned an ultimate yeah. lesson. Kirk has truly Who, learned... Some people were joking and saying, now Kirk's going to say, hey, I came back from the well, dead. I'm sure but, he will, but, but... You know, as a joke, but I, I mean, think there's... Not only has he has he given the ultimate sacrifice, he's learned fear, yes. which is something that he yeah. did not seem to have before. Yeah, yeah. At the scene at the glass <laughs> where he and Spock are talking back uh -huh. and forth as he's dying. He, he says, says, Spock, I'm, I'm scared. Yeah. yeah, I am scared. Teach me not to feel. <laughs> which is what Spock talks about with Destruction of Vulcan. Exactly. Exactly. And what Spock tells Kirk happened to Pike when Pike was dying. Yeah, yeah he felt so. all that and didn't want to ever feel it again. But I felt like this movie <laughs> left me more excited because I'm thinking, yeah. my gosh, we're uh, on the brink of war with Klingon. And they end with having the five-year contract. And yeah, so, yeah, and yeah, they wanted to go started. into a TV we've, series. Yeah, we started got now where the, TV where the original series yeah, began. Yep. And we've got all kinds of truly new frontier that yeah. they're able to go into. Which I, I did like that little, you know, as the movie ended, the space. Yep. The final frontier. They, they, they gave it to Chris it. Pine. Yes. They didn't give it to him last movie. They had <laughs> Leonard Nimoy do it. Yes. But this time, uh, it was him, and he he earned it. He yeah, earned it he after did. this. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, he is the alternate universe Kirk. He yeah, is <laughs> yeah he, is. he is the alternate universe yeah. Kirk. I mean, he finally, like I said, la prior to this movie, if they would have said who is the weak point in the movie, and I mean, you know, who is the weak? Not, not, not bad. Just who's the weakest? I would have said probably Kirk. Now I have a question. Yeah. Um, because I'm I'm seeing the picture that you have up on the on yeah. the computer screen. Was um Dr. Marcus the the daughter? She, yes. Was she an original character in the original series, or is she a completely new person? I believe um, she was in Wrath of Khan. Was she the Genesis? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Carol was, Marcus. Was that her, or was that because she mentions that her cousin or somebody is working on something in in this movie? Does, didn't she? No, it's her. It's, it's her. her. Okay. Now okay. she mentions Nurse specialist. Chapel. She yeah. mentions Nurse Chapel. That they had relative. to move Nurse Chapel away. Yes. Because remember, Nurse Chapel kind of had relationships that. with yeah. a little bit of That's everybody in the original of. series. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, Carol Marcus is the one who appears in Wrath of Khan and has a son with Kirk that he meets, like, as an adult. Yeah. So. Hmm. Kirk probably has a lot of kids out and there. And they did, uh, yeah, definitely, yeah. of all different colors and races yeah, and species. And, yeah. <laughs> Maybe um, we'll see that come did back to him. They have a in slight this little too. flirtation going they on. They did. Nothing much, but they had a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. We'll see what happens. Although, so did McCoy. <laughs> yeah, Bone, well, Bones okay, McCoy head. did too, and that's interesting because that sort of mirrors the uh, the dynamic that Chapel had in the original yeah. series. That sometimes it was Kirk, sometimes it was McCoy. So, mm -hmm. the Spock and Uhura thing was really different for this movie, yes. but I think it works. It's I interesting. Think, yeah, it does too. Because you see him develop, his character development kind of through her and, yeah. you know, vice versa. It, it brings more, more about, about her character out by seeing a relationship with somebody Yeah, else. I could I could see how someone would claim that they didn't like it, but I personally, I liked it. I really enjoyed um, Simon Pegg in this movie. Yes. Uh, you know, sometimes when they remove somebody from the main cast, I'm always like, oh no, you I just was, took away from everybody. I was very concerned. But I enjoyed his side adventure. Um, yes. Keenzer is the name of the little uh, clam like character. The face <laughs> yeah, was yeah, like yeah, a clam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's played by Deep Roy. <laughs> that um, is Deep Roy, that's right, I've yeah. forgotten. But it gave him somebody to talk to, oh. and I think, once again, he's another good Scotty. Uh, He's probably the only other character I think is doing a little bit impersonation, but also it's just because James Doohan gave Scotty such character yeah. that I mean, would you want to see a Star Trek movie where he didn't? Where he's not like that? I can't do it, Cap. No, you wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't want to watch that. Yeah. And I thought it was really interesting. Um, <laughs> some people, when they saw the ship that Marcus had built, thought it was going to be the Borg. 
So I thought it was the board. Well, okay. I thought first, that space yes, station behind station, Jupiter is yeah. very square, and it was very <coughs> yeah. That space station. Really, I, I, think I was a like, lot is that the Borg? Board. I thought it was the Borg too. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, do we have anything else to say about this film? If you haven't seen it, go and see yeah, it. Yeah, it was very We've good. all confirmed well it epic. It. It's mm-hmm. the best. I think it's easily the best Trek movie since Star Trek IV. The I Voyage agree Home. with you. Because that's um, one of my absolute favorites. My favorite, I, I don't know if my favorite is this one or, uh, or Wrath of Khan. Because they are both really good movies. Um, it's, it's very hard for me to choose between them. I really like this one. It's definitely one of those where I got to give it time. I mean, yeah. it really has to see, do I appreciate as much in, you know, next year, five years, ten years, does it hold up as well as Wrath of Khan? Will I still cry when Kurt dies? Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to yeah. see. I'm sure I will. But, um, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what happens with this new crew. Um, you know, I hope they keep Alice Eve as Dr. Marcus around. Yeah, yeah I do too. Um, because... At first, I was really <clears throat> suspicious of her. Oh, me too. I thought, I thought she was going to be a bad guy. Yeah, because I she's a woman, too. right, Gina? No. No, because I'm just she kidding. Was I'm messing with she you. She wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> she wasn't yeah. you just be kinda, there. I wondered if she was with John Harris. Who wanted, who wanted yeah. Zachary Quinto to walk up and say, how did you get aboard my ship? <laughs> Which is what he says at the first Star Trek to Kirk when Kirk oh, comes up. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, but I mean, once again, you're right. It, we've got another character added, but it's, a, it's another, you know, female character. And I would be interested to see some of these background characters get a little bit of life brought uh-huh. into them. Because, I mean, they, they have some interesting things. I, I'm going to bring up one last... Darn it, I have two more points. What? How much time we got? We got time? We got time. Okay. Go for it. First point. If they're still listening, this for another ties <laughs> into a conversation we had a couple weeks ago. And I'm interested to see what you think. Ricardo Montalban was was you know a Hispanic actor playing Khan. Khan was intended to be a mixture of all of these different conquerors in history. Mm-hmm. He was Khan Noonien Singh, so he was Indian. Was was the original intention. And now he's played by an extremely British man. A British man <laughs> very, very with white. with the most British yeah man. most white British name you've ever heard, <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, somebody brought that up, and I was like, "That's an interesting point," because he played the role so well. Yeah. What do you do with that? See, I, I personally don't really have an issue with that because the cast of Star Trek is so diverse mm-hmm. already. I mean, you can't say they're playing the let's make everybody white card yeah. or something like that. I mean, it. I think I think that they just said, hey, this is a really good actor. He would yeah. fit this role very well. Let's go yes. with him. There's nothing in this movie that identifies him as... Other than Spock it, saying Khan Noonien and Singh, yeah. which but, that's yes, their universe that's their version. Universe. They don't say it's selective breeding that that made him a super. That's super true. Strength. It's they s- just say that it's genetic. That it's yeah. genetic, genetic modification. As I was, as I was hearing that and thinking about <laughs> it, I was thinking though, if there was a movie, which we, our example was, if one of the Fantastic Four, or two of the Fantastic Four, all the Fantastic Four were, you know, black or Hispanic, would it be a big deal? And I started thinking about it, and my only thing was, <coughs> with the Fantastic Four, as long as Johnny and Susan Storm are the same race, uh-huh. because they're brother and sister. Exactly. Unless there's something weird going on there. But um, that was an element that they were they were siblings. So mm-hmm. you explain that to me. Uh, he's adopted or whatever, and I'm cool with that. Yeah. So it kind of made me th- rethink a little bit of that mm-hmm. argument. That as long if if it's not so tied into who the character is, like we we're ta- I think some yeah. examples we said um, Black Panther. Sorry, Black Panther doesn't make sense as a white. No, yeah. he has to be black. Um, 
I think a little bit of Superman would be, I mean, once again, is kind of that white Midwestern, you know, Although, average. With Superman, you have the freedom because he's from Krypton. He's not even human, so you can make him sure. whatever That's you But he fits, him. I think Superman's thing is he fits, he just fits in the Midwest, that kind of Yeah, Midwest is bland, still very predominantly white. Basic. Yeah. Um, there are some characters that, that would definitely work. But it was one of those things that, that it made me think a little bit. Um, Benicio Del Toro was originally in talks for this role, mm-hmm. which makes me think maybe he was, you know, they wanted him to play Khan. So, mm-hmm. which I think he would have done a fantastic job done. as well. I wonder if they just decided to go with a younger <laughs> actor to, uh, play against the younger crew. Yeah. I just think Benedict pulled it off so well because, <laughs> you know, I, I have no qualms with him being... Mm-hmm what he is because he represented the essence of Khan, which is yeah. cold, uh-huh. you know, <coughs> like compassionless. You which know. we've seen from him in Sherlock Holmes yeah, already, like, so we knew he could do that. His brutality. I think he played a very scary Khan. Oh, he very, did. You know, He's very ruthless. Yes, <coughs> ruthless. Completely, you know, even in his, just his eyes. His eyes uh-huh. say everything and he's just, yeah. and his voice, his voice fit it so well. Yep. Uh-huh. I will say this is what I hate about trailers because at the, now, shall we begin? I hated that part in the movie because I felt <coughs> like I'd seen it so many times in the yeah, trailers. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's like, such a great line. Yeah. You just Cheesy. hear it too many times. <laughs> yeah. But, no, I, I didn't have any problems okay. with that. Okay. Not really, no. I will jump to the second thing. After watching this movie, I am completely at peace with the idea of J.J. Abrams directing a Star Wars movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This felt to me... It felt like a Star Trek movie. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. yeah. It yeah, felt like, like a Star, Star Trek, Trek movie. But my gosh, it felt like a Star Wars movie, too, in terms of the pacing, mm-hmm. the character interactions, uh-huh. the background, the interesting background characters. Not in your face, you know, a giant monster walks by and passes gas that oh we got gosh. with episode one. Uh-huh. This felt like the interesting characters in the background of the, and I'm snapping my fingers to accentuate my point. <laughs> this felt like the interesting background characters of the original trilogy Uh i mean the 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 action scenes were interesting and unique loved it i'm excited to see what what jj abrams does with star trek star wars yeah i think for me it just it showed me that he's a genius with sci-fi and he can pull anything (laughs) you know he can yeah i i'm completely confident in his competence and his listening to the fans. I don't think he's going to obliterate what it is that we love about Star Wars. And once again, opening scene, call back to the possibly the greatest film of all time, Raiders of the Lost Ark, when they're running through Nero yeah, awesome. and the natives are throwing the spears at them and McCoy's like, What'd you grab? Because I don't know, this this scroll, they were bowing to it. Yes, and Kirk's and just can, running. I say, can, can I say that I had no clue why he stole that the first time I saw oh. it? It took me the second time seeing it to understand why he stole it. Oh, I was incredibly confused. Away. I was incredibly confused yeah. for a while. Yeah. I was like, if they weren't supposed to see you, why'd you infiltrate their ship? They were in disguise. I figured it out, but, you know, as they're, you know, <coughs> the ship is it leaving. It took me but, seeing it yeah. twice to figure out why they did that. I have, I have something. All right. Um, I just wanted to say that my absolute favorite scene of the entire movie movie was um when they are at Kronos and um Kirk and his team are going down and Sulu steps into the chair oh, and he man. he Sulu. says that entire monologue yeah. to um to Khan to Khan yes. and, and and because it's it's beautiful yeah, and then Bones says Remind me to never piss you off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I that loved was fantastic. It. I, loved it. I, I want to see. I want to see him have more time. Yeah, I do too. I yeah. want to see John Cho. No, that's yeah. not talking um, about John Cho. Uh, John Chu is the director yes. of GI Joe. John uh, Cho, John Cho, right? Cho. Yeah, is, John is, Cho. is who plays Sulu. And I he want, does a great job. Yeah. Yes, he does. Um, which is funny because for years George Takei was always pushing for a show where you know Sulu was a captain and came back as a captain. 
Um, and there's even kind of sort of working with that a little bit now. Yeah. 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 But which which movie is it where his daughter's a captain? There's one of the movies where uh, Sulu's daughter's a captain. I'm not, I'm not sure. One of the later we'll, ones. I'll have to look it up. Yeah. It's got to be five or six. But I he did know. he did comment in in this movie. He said, um, <clears throat> I could get used to this. Yeah. Or no, he yes. said. That it, it has a nice ring to it. Yes, meaning Captain, Captain. 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 Yes, I loved Sulu. it. Yes. Loved it. Yeah, so. I, yeah it I think... was nice to see because in the first, we saw him, you know, he fenced in the first one, in the which first was, one. was great because that and was. And so in the second one, you know, it was almost kind of like, huh, what the heck does he get to do? Oh, he gets to be Captain yeah, for a while. That's Captain. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think we're about ready to wrap this episode up. I am actually, I was really trying to find um, the information about his daughter and who. That's okay. It'll be a homework assignment for everybody. Are you joking? Nobody has written a good detailed entry on Wikipedia about the life of Hikaru Sulu. (laughs) Uh, Darn you, Wikipedia. Somebody's going to be up all night writing that. All right, if you're out there, Sulu needs a better biography on, I want an in-universe biography on Hikaru Sulu by the time we podcast next time. (laughs) Because I don't know how to use Wikipedia that well, and I'm not going to write it. (laughs) Oh my! <laughs> I want to see. I mean, see once again. I know they Leonard Nimoy is the only one they've explained in this, but my gosh, if they could find a way to to get George Takei in this movie, I mean, I don't think they how would. How cool would it be? It would be even if he was somebody amazing. else. Even if he was like his grandfather or something, that would be fine. That'd would be, be great, like Grandpa Sulu. And, <laughs> I mean, if he. Well, I mean, Leonard Nimoy is in, re- you know, has retired, and he still, you still know, comes back for Star Trek. Still did this. So he'll still come back for cameo. If no. you, if you are interested in, if you're interested in a weird listening experience, listen to um, William Shatner's his his real folk music that he sang in like the late '60s, early '70s. If you want a good music experience. Listen to um, Leonard Nimoy. Really Leonard Nimoy, has yes. a very nice voice and and sang a cover a lot of folk standards and he stuff. Sang a song about Bilbo Baggins. As he well. also sang a song about Bilbo Baggins, <laughs> but he he does a great version of the Harry Nielsen. Everyone's talking at yeah, me. He does. Uh, have you have you seen my friend Martin? Um, the the if I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the yeah. morning. I mean. Really had a nice, very nice yeah. voice for singing. So, well, we're wrapping this up. Uh, we hope you enjoyed, uh, you know, going into warp speed with us tonight. And oh, that was, I'm sorry, but that was another thing that we saw. The um, invention of the multiple warp speed engine. They It could go, you know, warp yep. four, warp five, warp six. Yep. We saw that. All right. Well, we saw that, too. Um, once again, check us out at theepicreview.com. That's www.thepicreview.com. Uh, Gina, where can we see more information about you and more of your work? Um, it'll hopefully be up on um, theepicreview.com. And also, you can follow me on Twitter at Gina Beaner. I do lots of updates on um, gaming news that's going on, some comic book stuff, Um yeah, really, 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 really okay, really, uh huh, uh huh. Oh yeah. my! Um, so if, if you're just wanting a source of information for just some general updates on what's going on out there, follow me. Kristen, where can we find more information that you of things you cover? Um, well, you can always follow me on Twitter at Arithalia. Um, you can also keep up with um what I'm posting on the Epic Review Facebook page and Twitter, GH Epic Review. And you can find my work on theepicreview.com. You can also check out my Flickr page. It's www.flickr.com slash photos slash barbecue17. That's B-A-R-B-E-C-U-E-1-7. And we will see you next time. But for now, we are out. Out.